Okay, oh my goodness. It is time to return to and finish up 8.11 version 2. Uh, we are hopping straight into Act 3. Let's see if I can remember what the heck happened. Um, I remember we had a weird dream with hand angels. That was the last thing I remember. Oh, ringing. Yeah, there was a phone. Okay. Phone, angels, they was a thing. So that's why the ringing is fading away. You become hyper aware of your current state and jump, now re realizing you just woke up. Oh. That's right, Riker looks like a freaking mess. <laughs> oh, returning to this place. Uh. Oh, it was a dream? Oh, he has like a little uh, thing tied around his finger. Hello, kitty cat. We have this really interesting music playing right now. It's so dramatic. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Where am I? This place looks vaguely familiar, right? Now I keep thinking about it. I sound crazy. Anyways, I must be at a Cardi's house. I vaguely remember coming home with him. Oh, that's right. He got like blackout drunk, I think. So a Cardi must have taken him home, I think. All right, so we are at a Cardi's abode. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for the follow, stupid Noah. See some sparklies. You happen upon a strange low-lit light that emits from under some papers and books. You crouch and look under, finding a single gold piece of paper. Hmm. Oh, another bug VHS. What's he got this? Why's he got this at his house? That's kind of suspicious. He's got a violin. He's got some, some vinyls. Seems he likes music. Magazines that were never removed from their plastic wrapping. Front covers range from home decor to cooking to gardening. Oh, that's right. He did mention he likes gardening. He does have quite a lot of plants. He likes vinyls. He likes plants. He's got some good taste. A few papers. Got like a gigantic fax machine, is that what that is? It's got like a fireplace. So many plants! Oh, this is cute. I can vibe with this. Is that a, what? Okay, that is a big ass mirror. That is, that is an enormous, that is an enormous mirror. I mean, aside from, like, knowing what this game is about, even if I was just an ordinary person in an ordinary world, I would probably be like, yo, what the... Why you got such a good big mirror, man? Lots of mirrors in this house. You look down at the string on your finger, then back at the mirrors surrounding you. Like a little chessboard. I mean, like, you, you, like, really into yourself, bro? It's just a, it's just a little intimidating. Door is locked. I'm assuming I can't go down there. All right. Lots of pretty pictures. Yeah, there are a lot of me. Okay, so these are mirrors. These, I thought they were photographs for a second. Those are mirrors. Right, these are lots of tiny mirrors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, there he is. Gotta remember how I voiced a Cardi. <clears throat> oh, you're up. I thought I heard something. How are you? You passed out in my car and then refused to wake up when we arrived. Yes, you made it. I just started. <laughs> no worries. So I carried you in and put you on the couch. It's still dark out. How long was I asleep for? Um, uh, just a few hours, I think. I'm surprised you're awake. 
If you want anything, join me. Oh, how embarrassing. I'm sorry about the mist that's plagued my home. Okay, this is every person I've ever visited ever. They always say like, oh, my house is so dirty. And then it's like perfectly fine. Shut up. <laughs> I just cleaned my place a few days ago too. Did you just put books in your fridge? Me though. That's a lie. Apologies, my mind doesn't work well at this hour of the night. I guess he was like, I don't want you to read that. I'm just gonna... Whoop. I do admit there are parts of my apartment that are kind of messy. That I would be like, uh, pardon, pardon that, but... Did... Akardi, did you just pull a Don... Uh, not a Dante, what's his name? Uh, Date, excuse me. Did you just pull a Date? Did you have some, some erotic magazines on the floor and you were just like, I'm gonna just... What are you doing at this hour? Oh, uh, reserve all judgments. But I was getting hungry and I was gonna heat up some leftovers. Oh, a midnight sneer. It's a bit late, but I'm really hungry. No judgments here. I'm personally just amazed you're hungry at this hour. I feel sick. Mmm. Maybe we should just have tea instead. I was going to reheat the... Mmm. I made yesterday, but... The what? Oh boy, I have to try and pronounce this. Svegalia alla Valdostana. It's an Italian dish. I think it's super delicious. I vaguely remember looking up what this was before. Give me a second. I'm curious what this- what this is. Sfoglia, excuse me. So Sfoglia alla Valdostana. Oh, this actually does look tasty. Mmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me put up a picture of this. That's not how you pronounce pizza. Okay, this man is too fancy for, for whatever p pizza. Do you see his house? <laughs> nah, this man's like the guy that goes to Whole Foods. And gets the, the- Whoa, it's big. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is it so big? Ah! No, Riker, go back. Uh, so like it's like a it's like a puff it's like a puff pastry with meat in it it looks like yeah pizza and spaghetti so it looks like uh, it looks like this I'm just gonna put this in the corner for now for a moment there it goes uh, sorry Riker it's gonna cover up your face your face is now p puff pastry it's a it's a Creamy ham and cheese puff pastry. There we go. That sounds tasty. I would eat that. Creamy ham and cheese puff pastry. Sign me up. It does sound kind of... Yeah, like a ham and cheese calzone, but fancy. I do admit that it does sound kind of heavy to eat late at night. I think eating at this hour is irresponsible. Not sure how I want to put that into words for you to understand. I think tea should do us nicely. It'll help us sleep better and calm our nerves. Ah, thank you. What kind of tea do you like? I should have asked first. I'm a bad host. What tea do I like? 
Oh, we get we get options. Well, you know what I'm gonna do as a as a completionist. We're gonna do every single one <laughs> because as a as a tea enjoyer myself, I need to know what all of these different tea options are. All right, let's go simple first. Something you can't mess up. Black tea. Because even crappy Lipton black tea is usually pretty good. Simple. Black tea. Black tea, huh? Did you know black tea isn't that different from green tea? Black tea is just a bit more complex to make. Complex, really? Thank you for being so patient. I'll immediately start our teas. Where do I go? Maybe over here? Do I go over here? Or do I go down here? Or do I just talk to you again? I mean, depending upon how fancy you get, I mean, you can go basic bitch, take your tea bag, put it in a cup, pour hot water on it, kabam. Or you can be super fancy with it and be like loose tea, put it in a little, um, like one of those like bags that have the loose tea in it, or you can have like an infuser. And then you can have the proper temperature for your tea and wait the proper amount of time. So like, oh, maybe your tea only steeps for like five minutes. And you can go full snooty and make sure that your tea is, is properly uh, made. So it, it's a range. I'm usually in the middle. I, I just go with tea bags most of the time, but if I want to be fancy, I'll use loose tea. But I do admit if you overbrew your tea, it can taste pretty bad. I was a chronic overbrewer for most of my life, and then I learned that was a thing. And I was like, oh, if you keep the tea bag in too long, that's a thing. And, and then I stopped doing that, and then my tea tasted significantly better. Anyways, sorry, I just went into a, I, I went into a, a rant about tea, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for being patient with me. Okay, so is this gonna start it? Do I just like go somewhere? Mm, maybe here, where do I go? Ah, here we go. I gotta sit at the table. Taking in all the decorations. With swift speed, Cardi finishes the teas and carries them on a silver platter. Places your specially designed tea in front of you. Wow, this smells incredible. Thank you, I really appreciate this. He smiles and pauses to look away from me to take a drink from his tea. It's incredible. It's so inviting and fresh tasting. Warms you up instantly and washes away all the anxieties like a gentle brush of the seaside. Wow, this is amazing. What did he put in that tea? It's just tea. This is seriously the best tea I've ever had. I have had tea that good, though. I'm not gonna lie. When you have really, really, really good tea, it's... It's like night and day from just, like, average tea. It's like, yo! You mentioned you were, like... Mentioned you like to cook, right? Are you really good at it? No, I'm not like the best at it. Both of my parents were gifted with the art of cooking, so I grew up with the best teachers. That's really cool though. You should be proud of that. I can only cook like grilled cheese or soup or microwave some rice. <sighs> microwave in the rice, Riker. Hmm. Although I admit I can't, I can't make grilled cheese. I, I, I don't know why. That's of the, of the few things in this world I cannot make properly. I, I always burn my grilled cheese. Would you like to te me to teach you how to cook? 
Or rather, would you allow me to cook for you? It's in my blood to represent the best of Italy's finest meals. It would be an honor to cook some for you. Ah, you grew up in Italy? Are both your parents Italian? Both parents are Italian. Grew up in Capri, then Florence, then back to Capri. Ah, how nice. I miss France, my parents, my birth parents. Oh, were you like adopted? I'm sure they miss me. I miss them too. I don't know how I would explain myself. Explain leaving, that is. Oh, why did you leave them? I'm not sure it's a conversation I'm ready to have. They probably worry about me. They might think I'm dead for all I know. I'm sorry to hear that. Ugh, I'm so stupid. I had to ruin the conversation and make it upsetting. It's hardly quiet. Or awkwardly quiet between you two. Finish your tea and patiently wait for him. When he finishes, you get up to leave. <laughs> I went to get daddy number two. Okay, well... You, you, I need to know what the other options do. What are the other teas? Tea catalog. Put your books in your fridge and make me some tea. So we had some black tea. What about chai tea? Simple enough. It's just a combination of tea, milk, and some Indian herbs. Simple enough. Thank you for being patient. It smells incredible. I appreciate this. It's incredible. It's so inviting and fresh tasting. I get, I get pretty, I feel like chai tea is very easy to mess up because if it's too sweet, it's just real bad. But when it's done right, it's, it's very good. Right now I'm putting on my snooty, my snooty uh, tea hat. Warms you up instantly and washes away all the anxieties like a gentle brush of the seaside. This is amazing. It's just tea. Okay, so I think he just says the same thing again. He just says like it's really good tea. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, green tea is kind of like black tea, like you said, where it's very easy to make, but you can you can you can overcook it pretty much. Chai tea actually requires like quote unquote preparation. It's like mixing the ingredients and stuff. Green tea, huh? I could do different kinds of green tea. I could do matcha or sencha or. You don't have to overdo it. I I'm thankful enough you even want to make us tea. Okay. That's true, there are lots of green teas. I'm not a big matcha person, actually. I, I don't think I've ever had a, a matcha tea that I enjoy. I think I have maybe had one... I mean, I like oolong tea. I don't know. I think that's technically considered black. I like sometimes, even like matcha flavored cakes and stuff seem to be a little too overwhelming for me. Or like matcha flavored ice cream. I need to have it paired with something else. Can't, I think I might have had Sencha once, but I, I can't actually say if I have... Okay, so he says, seems like the same dialogue again. But his tea, no matter what you have, is extremely anxiety reducing. So this man's got some, some good, some good teas. He's got it all in his, his cupboard.
All right, there's one final option, which is... Surprise me. What tea do you think I would like? I'm not particular about my tea, so surprise me? Hmm, I'll have to find one that suits you. Do you like movies? What's your favorite? Are we still talking about tea? Did I mistranslate? Uh, silent films? I always like those. He's a very, very hipster. Oh, I like movies where they don't even talk. Hmm, really? Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. I don't own anything like that. But those choices are fitting for you. And now I'm curious. What's your favorite color? Are we just getting grilled? Favorite color? Purple? Or gray? Fascinating. Did you notice my hair is purple? I was just about to say, I'm like, do you like him because his hair is purple? <laughs> what about favorite food? Hmm. Tough to say. I like sweet things, so I really like yogurt and cakes. I really like yogurt or cake with fruit. Well, it's a good thing you got a yogurt cake for your birthday that has yogurt and cake. What about you? Favorite food? Lo a Cardi. Cardi, I'm gonna need you to back up for a moment there. Are you admitting to me what I think you're admitting? Um... I do know what that is. Riker does not know what that is. Maybe that's a good thing. No, never heard of it. Oh, what a shame. Perhaps I could make it for you sometime. I really enjoy your company. Do you think he would like it, Akari? Is that what's gonna be inside of your quote-unquote pork and cheese puff pastry, Akari? In your fridge right now? Hmm. Anyways, all right, now I know the more about you. That girl will eat whatever you make him? I mean, that's true, this man... This man, um... Probably won't eat anything at this point in time. He's probably very poor and hungry. Oh, man, wait a minute, didn't he have... Akari made a strange comment earlier in the game about looking at photographs of Riker when he got hit by a car and he made some strange comment about oh no I'm going to get hungry or something and it suddenly makes a lot of sense now was he was he looking at Riker when he got all f beat up by a car and he was literally considering like if he's dead I think I might make him into my next pork sandwich and then he was not dead and then he was like ah damn <laughs> I have to wait next week <laughs> thought I was gonna get a free meal thank you for being so patient with me I will immediately start our teas Akardi I learned a lot more about you from this conversation about tea than I ever thought I was going to I do remember that from last time, so I guess they kept that cons consistent. I remember this conversation for sure. Cardi, what's this? Ooh, chrysanthemum tea. Oh, that sounds fancy. I took in what I learned about you and made a tea designed just for your needs. Chrysanthemum tea has many benefits. It's said to treat respiratory issues, help with sleep, and calm your nerves. 
You can add honey to it if you'd like, but the tea already has a natural, subtle, sweet taste to it. Wow. You sure know a lot about teas. Oh, that kind of makes sense. I mean, it grows a lot of plants. Thank you, though. I really appreciate it. He smiles and looks away from you to tea, drink from his own tea. It's inviting and fresh tasting. Warms you up instantly and washes away all the anxieties like a brush of the seaside. This is amazing. It's just tea. Yeah, fancy ass tea. It probably would be the best tea you've ever had. I've definitely never had chrysanthemum tea. Okay, so then he talks about his, his parents. They're Italian. They're really good at cooking. Okay. Are you tired? You're more than welcome to sleep here. Maybe, maybe not. Mm, he's debating. I would crash on his couch, homie. Um, I mean, I guess I'd just go out the front door? Okay. You find your things by the front door, get ready to leave. It's pretty late. Do you feel okay to sleep back at your motel? You're more than welcome to stay here. I don't mind anymore. I think I'm just hallucinating. Yeah, that's totally what's happening. It's just a hallucination, Riker. Sometimes it feels like my skin has things crawling under it and my head gets dizzy. Sometimes I swear I can feel my own organs breathing. What does that mean? Sometimes I hear my friend's voice when he should be dead. I'm going insane, but I'm convincing myself that things, everything's okay. Everything's fine! Yeah. Akari's saying the real things. When was the last time you ate a proper meal and had enough sleep? Uh. Thanks for grabbing my bag and stuff from your car. Riker, what you said earlier. What can you not explain to your parents? One afternoon, I just never came back home. I left for work, but missed my ship on purpose. I didn't say goodbye or anything. Any reason for that? I don't want to talk about that. It's personal. Speaking of personal, I want to know why you're really here in Rosso Kader. Why do you obsess with the Basilica? You told Juliet and I that a friend of yours died due to the curse of the Basilica. That Basilica took, uh, curse took its time with them, if it's real. <laughs> Why are you here? Will you judge me for my reasoning? I promise not to. I am not one to judge. If you tell me, I'll share a secret of my own. I don't care what crazy cult stuff went down at the Basilica. Cult stuff? Or the rumors surrounding that building? Or what people try to tell me? But straight up, my friend was murdered. He was robbed of his life. Love and a funeral, and I'm taking it back through bloodied hands. Hmm. You're admitting to wanting to kill someone? To me? Why are you telling me this? You asked. Sure, but <laughs> we aren't close friends. Are we? I considered you one. That's the past tense. Thank you. I was considering you a new friend, too. What are your thoughts on it? On me wanting to kill someone? <laughs> Into it. Mildly fascinated. A priest that goes against his morals, one set by his lord. I only wish you luck. I won't interfere. Thank you. I won't stop you. I'm mildly curious about your plans. Yeah, that face says I'm into it. You're okay with taking someone's life? 
It's a priest. It's. <laughs> I. No. Does it bother you that you're no different than this man who killed your friend if you succeed? Hmm. We get a yes or no. Does it bother you? <laughs> um. Rikers does not seem like the most religious priest, ironically, so I'm gonna say... Nah, it doesn't bother me. Ah, uh, truthfully, no. Don't go on and on about how revenge is sick and wrong to me. I'm fully aware that I truthfully don't care anymore. I'm just taking back what originally belonged to me. And that would be... You're letting somebody else's death haunt you and kill yourself as an individual. Times it feels like I die the same day my friend did too. Yeah. This death is haunting me and not having the answers to what happened is just eating me alive. You have to learn to let these things go. Some people don't get answers why someone they love dies. That mystery alone is the only answer they get. You're not my therapist, shut up. No, but just a concerned friend. Feels wrong to teach what is right to a priest, just so you know. It's weird, but the act of murdering someone doesn't even bother me when it feels like it should. It's definitely wrong, and I don't want to say I'm okay with any kind of violence. Uh, it's so hard to explain how I feel to a foreigner. Your language is so confusing you put into words. But my fe spirit feels lifted in a way. As if I know what awaits me in the end, but to accept it, no matter what, I just want to put justice in Neon's name. Hey, I mean, that's kind of what angels do, right? Angels are literally like, you know, arbiters of justice and stuff, so it makes sense. Do you think your friend would be at peace if he knew you would kill someone under his name? I don't forgive myself, but I also don't forgive the murderer. Eh, it's kind of a tough position to be in. I don't care what happens to me, as long as I can clear in Leon's name and find out why he was a victim. It's unforgiving when a good thing ends. But I would reconsider everything if I were you. Finish putting your shoes on and get ready to leave. I've had my beliefs shaken before, but God always finds a way back into my heart. Maybe in a way I'm hoping God will stop me before I do anything stupid. Nah, you've already done some stupid shit. You open the front door, step out on the porch, then look back at Icardi before leaving. I'm gonna look for some guidance on this. Uh, what was your secret? Uh, you're part of the deal. The deal? Oh yes, truthfully put. I'm afraid of dreams. Oh yeah, you mentioned you quote-unquote, like, avoided them purposefully. I don't know how that happens, but... My mother told me that when people die, their souls get trapped in random people's dreams. Oh, that's f fucked up. Why would she tell you that? So I get afraid that when I dream, I'll see dead people that are trapped in my mind. I see. Sorry if I made you uncomfortable talking about my trauma and a close death. No worries, friend. Death doesn't scare me. I quite love the idea of death, actually. I'm more afraid of what happens after, as in the afterlife. Ah, that's a poor thing to say after the conversation we just had. Oh yeah, tell me more about that fucked up thing that happened. It's um, very fascinating to me. No offense taken. Do you fear judgment, Akardi? Yes. Please don't give me a religious brochure on how my soul should be saved. I don't want to be sold anything. I know you don't want any religious advice, but if it helps, I can save you some emotional tax. I could pray for you and ask to forgive you for what you've done. I won't require you to go to church or anything. I'll just put in a good word for you. <laughs> no, thank you, but I wish you luck. Understandable. Well, thank you for everything so far. As thanks, I want to give you something. Huh? A gift? You don't need to. It's an orange. 
I need to get rid of some things anyways to keep my bag light. You may want to check for bruising, but it's yours. You hand over the single orange. <laughs> oh, this image, just the way he's looking at it and, and holding it. It's like, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Ah. <laughs> uh. It's like, what? What am I supposed to do with this now? Why did. Why would you profess your love to me in this way, you idiot? Th Thank you. Yeah, I don't mention it. I guess Riker doesn't understand what he just did. He's just like, eh, just... Just take this stupid orange. It's in my bag. I don't need it anymore, eh? Take it. But that's like the equivalent... To, like, handing somebody a carnation on Valentine's Day to fucking a cardi. You leave before you can say anything. You hear the door behind you shut. There was a certain shop in town that had your interest. Hopefully they can help. That is indeed a very small orange, though. It was very comedically tiny and cute in his hands. Okay, so... Oh, this shop is open. It says open. You hesitantly knock on the door. Oh, the open sign is off. I don't know, it looked like it was open. Maybe if I wrote them a note asking for an appointment, then I can come back tomorrow. Oh, nope! They're still there. You! Oh, French tourist. It's you. Out this late? Yeah, sorry. I, I was just wondering if I could sign up for an appointment. Appointment? I read the poster on your wall, the, the one about talking to the dead. Oh, that. Yeah, here. You can go in. Oh. Tell Dakota I let you in. I have trash to take out. Thank you. Hey, dude. Uh, just, just d d casual conversation starter. Um, can we talk to the dead? Stop moving. Eh? You're that French tourist. We're like close. You'll have to. Ah, uh, but uh, Wanko let me in. Please, Dakota. I, I want to make an appointment to communicate with a dead person. <laughs> Sounds really stupid saying that coming from someone like me. From a priest? Uh, I know it's like super sacrilegious, let's just keep it under the table. From a skeptic. I don't believe in spirits or ghosts, but I'm getting pretty desperate. I'm starting to wonder if I'm insane, or if what I see or hear is real. Mm, well, you see, we don't typically take walk-ins. Please understand. Especially walk-ins that are coming after we close. Please, I'm really sorry for the inconvenience. But I'm short on time, and I promise it's worthwhile. I'm trying to communicate to my de deceased friend, Leon. He was a victim in the French case you covered, and I was there at the night of his murder. Oh? Is that so? Strange how no witnesses were reported that night. Why is he, why is haven't you gone to the police if you're a witness? That's a complicated situation I'm caught in. Not to mention I witnessed a guy's head getting blown off. I'm begging you. I can respect my wishes and not report any of this, but I can't go to the police. I, I just can't. I think my friend, the victim of the case, is trying to communicate something to me. And it's strange to say that as a priest, but it's not like there's religious guidance I can find in this town. The one church that's here is beyond haunted. I ain't praying there. I think you're the best chance I have now. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. If the creek don't rise, I can try and help. We, we often get grieving desperate people like you. I can't turn away someone like this, right? 
truth is, I'm a bit disappointed I can't record this experience. It would have been great material, but I'll help. Don't wait on me now. Go ahead and enter the curtain room over there. We're gonna start. Curtain room? I'm guessing it's uh, this blue thing here. Oh, this is where you do it? Ah yes, this looks very much um, like where you should uh, try and contact the dead and not where you get really comfy and smoke a hookah and get high. I love the little uh, sparklies. You sit on a plush pile of pillows. Having second thoughts. Dakota comes in moments later. I'm off the clock, so I'm not even gonna ask you to sign anything. Just uh, go sue us if you don't like the results. Let's start this, yeah? <laughs> I like his little sitting on the pillows sprite. I don't mean to offend you, huh? But does any of this really work, or am I being scammed? Uh, Dude, it's a bit late to ask for a refund. There's no instant results. You have to wait until the spirit we call upon answers, which can take an undetermined amount of time. How can you prove ghosts exist? Can you prove your god exists? My god exists as I hold love for him, and he holds love for me. He creates energy for everything, and without him there would be no light. Uh, I didn't expect you to answer that, actually. Spirits are much different. The energy from our souls can linger on, and I try to help those souls deliver their final messages to the living. If spirits didn't exist, how else would you enter heaven? I never really gave that thought. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I, I thought, like... I thought priests would be somewhat okay with the idea of at least souls. I don't know if they would be okay with the idea of, like, ghosts. But I thought they would be because, like, aren't, aren't like, is, isn't that what, like, exorcisms and stuff are about, you know? Like, spirits that haven't passed on properly? I, I thought they would at least maybe not formally recognize the, the existence of souls and spirits and ghosts but i i feel like that would all fall in line with with the beliefs because i definitely believe in souls so i don't know i don't know if i'm convinced i worry that this trauma is haunting and manifesting into our reality uh would be your best bet of ritual scaria i would recommend this as it might be better for your uh, comfort level you don't need a fancy complex ritual to speak to the dead they hear you they see you but i'm helping them deliver a message easier what's uh, uh is like an alternative way to communicate with the deceased would you happen to have an important item from your friend with you? Oh, I have his crucifix. I do, but before we start, can I ask you something? I don't know if you could help, but you seem, uh, in tune with paranormal stuff. I'm wondering if you've seen anything like this before. You pull out the Bible Leon gave you. You're careful not to open it. The Bible. Is that the super special item linked to your friend? Yes, it's... No, 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 no. Oh, he, he knows. He knows this thing is bad. Don't tell me about it. It's not meant for me to know about it. Keep that special between you and your friend, dude. It's linked to you and the deceased's right now, so don't lose that connection. Here, take this. We'll first write a note, 
Don't tell me what you're writing. Dakota hands you a piece of paper and an old-fashioned quill pen. Blank paper. What exactly do I write? Just write what you want to say or ask to your friend. Take the pen and paper and ponder what to write. Leon, are you gay for me? Write yes. If not, that's fine too. Love, Riker. As you think, Dakota gives more instructions. You see the candles on the table? The candles represent your deceased loved one. I thought you said this wasn't going to be a ritual. It's just a tiny one, pure boy. Don't flip. When you're done writing, just burn the note and send it off. And you say goodbye, leave this room, take your time, make sure you're holding on to that special item you linked with your pal. You nod, holding the battle bowl close to your chest. Thank you, Dakota, for helping me tonight. All right. Candles bring dancing lights and shadows. It's a little bit redder in here. Oh, what is this face? <laughs> <laughs> Why does his face look like this? He's very swollen, I guess. I don't know, this just seems very different from normally how Riker is depicted. I don't know, it's something about maybe maybe the way his lips are being drawn here. <laughs> it's not the expression I would <laughs> This is not the this is not the expression I would <laughs> I would be making when I'm thinking about writing a, a note to my uh, deceased. <laughs> There's something I want to say, but I I don't know if I should say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine, I'll say it. This looks like post nut Riker. God, sometimes, sometimes the intentions of our drawings just <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Stare at the gentle flames, holding the Bible in your right hand, and your other hand- No, I'm sorry! <laughs> I'm sorry! It's just stop. <laughs> I should stop! <laughs> Close to your beating chest. The room feels different with the candles flickering, and with Dakota gone, you're alone, and the atmosphere feels- Atmosphere feels surreal and, and heavy. I just need to get this image off the screen as soon as possible. <laughs> to go to Cinder right on a piece of paper and then burn it. Okay, thank God. <laughs> you open your bag to find the paper. As you do, several voices can be heard. You quickly rearrange the contents in your bag to find any piece of paper that you can write on. Why is it saying it? Any piece of paper. I don't like this. Okay. Well, he gave me a piece of paper. But maybe I should use something that's more... meaningful? Uh, 
um, like, maybe the letter that's, like, important to us, like, like the letter that, that led us here. Oh, that one didn't work. Because this red envelope was what we found at the church. <laughs> Anyways. You grab the first paper object you find. This might fuck me, but I don't know. No, don't show me this face again. Your bag now closed to so stop making any whisper-like noises. I'm not getting enough sleep. Yeah, I see those bags under your eyes. You pull out the item you grabbed. The red envelope from the basilica. Guess I really did grab this. Inside are two red papers, the blank one and the pre-written one. Instead of writing on the paper Dakota gave, you write on the empty red one. You fold the paper when you finish writing. You don't understand entirely why this feels like the right thing to do. You allow on that one end to burn. It's a shorter process than you expected, but the letter soon becomes nothing more than microscopic burnt pieces. All right, burnt the letter. This this music though is very, very ominous. I don't like it. It's putting me in a mood. It's putting me back in the mood. Hey guys. So, you're dealing with the loss of a friend? Yeah, it's rough understatement of the century. That's to be expected. But allow these emotions to happen. Don't hide from your grief. I'll uh, try my best. Hmm, good. Hey, how'd it go? I not sure. How long until I get a response? You could get a response in many ways, dude. Dreams, strong, nostalgic feelings. Even smelling that person, what? Can be signs. But there's no time I can predict it, stuff. 30 minutes? A month? Sorry, bud. There's no way to ensure it's sooner rather than later. If it's urgent, he could talk to you tonight. <laughs> Confetti! Good luck, French Pris. You sound like you need it. I love the confetti. Earlier, Riker leaves before you can say anything. Oh! <laughs> Back to orange! Was this intentional? Uh. <laughs> you pocket the orange. Oh, we're a cardi now. Oh. Acquired one orange. Oh. You happen upon a strange low lit gold light. Single gold piece of paper. Strange. Odd. You're getting a minor headache, but nothing to care about, or cry about. You glance over the text, making sense of the passages written on it. Interesting. I know this isn't mine. I wonder if this belongs to Riker. Oh. Did, like, a piece of the Bible, like, fall out? Because he said it, like, made his head hurt, and it's kind of gold. Hmm. Yeah, the phone! <laughs> Finally, it makes sense. Akadi. Oh. Are you in your living room? Am I in my living room? Uh, yes. Wow. No wonder I can't understand you. <laughs> uh, is this connection really bad in there? I can't hear you. Just go to your office! Continue the phone call in there, prick! Alright. His two phones? 
you don't hang up the line, intentionally leaving this phone to go continue the call on the phone in your office room. I love to mess with them. My office is typically locked up for numerous reasons. Keys for it should be in the kitchen, hidden under the fiddle leaf fig. Okay. The fiddle leaf fig in the kitchen? I don't know what that looks like. I'm no plant expert, but... Oh, there we go. Cool. I love how this maniac hides his keys in a plant in his own home. But for some reason he doesn't want people in his office. I... I just got it. Nice, I love the zebra print is still present. Computer. Holds all your clients' files, allows you to work at home. He's ready for for today. Phone number two. Hello, is this phone working? What makes you call so late in the night, Vitorino? Do you still have those books and audio tapes I lent you? I told you I wasn't done with them. I'm not any better at understanding them than you are. Is this all you wanted from me? Mm. I met Gabriel today. Do you remember him? I I'm sure you do. I thought he was dead. That's what we were told. I, I think there's angels or ghosts haunting me more than usual. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, that line is just really funny to me. You know, I usually have only about seven ghosts haunting me, but now there's eight. I hate it. More than usual. I can hear them. I can see them. Akadi, is it just Gabriel or are there more? They follow me. Everywhere I go, they follow me. They make the skin on my palms hurt. Are you being haunted too, Akardi? Are your ghosts haunting you? Well, the seventh ghost is, but not the sixth. You look down at your free hand. Are you alone? No. They're looking at me. I can't make them go away. I don't even feel safe enough to say how scared I am. You're free to stay at my house any time to feel more comfortable. Yeah, maybe not crash at the fucking haunted basilica, Vitorino. You're my friend. No. Vitorino. I think it needs to be said that someone knows about Dante. Uh-oh. It's because Riker talked to Cardi about the thing about Leon. I had a deep gut feeling to tell you. I've heard. Do you remember who Dante is? Can you find him? No. Something feels wrong. I have memories of him, but I can't conjure up his face. Oh, that's kind of... Hmm. That's a weird sensation. I can remember who this person is, but I can't remember what he looks like. It's like remembering a stranger's face from a dream. How are your memories? The more recent ones, I mean. Sometimes I feel like I'm remembering things that only happened in a dream. When I close my eyes, I'm seeing things I can't even explain. Are you still sensitive to lights? There's no response from Vitorino. Seems he hung up. You put the phone back. I want to smoke a cigarette to relieve this stress. Or even see Juliet. He always manages to cheer you up. Hmm. You still want to talk? No? Okay. That's fair.
Well, I guess I'll go to meet Juliet. Change into your lace-up leather dress shoes, preparing to go meet Juliet. Hopefully he doesn't get too upset about me coming over at this time. I wonder if he'll even be awake. While adjusting your scarf, you open your front door. A, a powerful, frightening light slips through the crack of your door frame, instantly blinding you. What? Oh. Oh no. Did we get dreamed? What is going on here? Hey. It's me. And also me. And you. And also you. Huh? What are you doing here, Riccardi? I got a new camera. I figured I could test some, take some test photos here and see how it develops. Is that so? I thought you hated churches and religious stuff. Hmm. Hate is such a strong word. I'm just critical of your practices and beliefs. I care less what you do, though. I'm just here for the aesthetics. Oh, boy, do I feel that. Hmm. Or do I feel that? Not to be an orthodox father, but the uniforms you put your men in makes me crazy. Oh! Why do I feel that, Accardi? No need to be so formal and calling me a father, Accardi. You can be more personal than that if you wish. How about friend? Another time, perhaps? I just want to get photos when I still have time with the sunlight. I like how they could be so informal with one another. <laughs> it's just like, dog, do you know I have fucking nice churches look? I mean, I don't like the church, but do you know how nice churches look? I mean, really, the aesthetic, though. Like, why do you people build them so nice? Or I thought you were just leaving. I think I'm lost. Would you mind helping me? I'm not used to this place like you. Why? You only get used to this place if you get lost and find your exit through desperation. Thanks, Vittorino. Okay, and then he says this again. Well, I guess I have no choice but to... leave? Hmm. What's this? Some unattended red wine. Mm, my favorite brand. My brand! Are we destined to another wine? What? An open red wine bottle. Got some wine. Also, it's the eyeball door. Okay, you want some. You want to have a drink? Oh! He asked him to bless the wine! Wine? You showed the unopened red wine bottle you found earlier. Akadi, don't tell me you took this from our wine collections in the cellar now, did you? Heavenly Father, of course not. I merely found it outside the room. I just found it on the fucking floor. <laughs> no one's name's on it. Would you mind blessing it for me? <laughs> Bless this wine for you? Are you truly my dear pal, Accardi? He would never ask a priest to bless some random wine, much less the bottom of his shoes. I know how silly it may seem, but I would appreciate it. It's not for my personal spiritual beliefs anyhow. Don't get too serious, Accardi. I'll bless it with my voice of honey and my prayers picked deliciously from heaven. The red wine has been blessed. Enjoy your blessed wine. I'm positive I will. Thank you. I actually have no idea what the process is for, you know, making the wine into the wine that they use through church ceremonies. But I imagine it's special. Certainly a lot less church looking down here. Why is it? Eh. It's suddenly like a hospital down here? What's up with this?
There's a note here. The author remains anonymous, but you give it a read. There's a superstition here that if you purify wine by the words of a preacher, that wine can bring magical properties. Well, it's a darn good thing that I did that. My sister tried it and succeeded. She said she could swim in the mirrors like deep oceans and hear the walls of the church breathe like a dragon in deep slumber. I tried it, but nothing has happened. Reality hasn't changed for me at all. I wish whoever tries it, good luck. Hey, drink me up. You pour the blessed red wine on the mirrors below you. Oh, and now I'm over here with an owl. <laughs> he doesn't know the wine trick. <laughs> You know, that's clearly what you're supposed to do with the wine that you, you know, use for a communion. You just pour it on a mirror. And then you go to the mirror world. Oh, I can't interact with this cute little owl. Oh, well. Oh. Now I'm here. Okay. I didn't come from this area. I don't recognize this area. Maybe I should have brought Vitorino with me. I believe I hear singing. Distant, but still in range, I'm sure. Are we in the Basilica again? You can hear birds singing. Their tunes mixed with the choir that is mysteriously about. Oh, I just realized I still have the... <laughs> I still have... The... Riker's head is still this, I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh... Ooh. We've got some mirrored nuns. Some painting. The context behind it is lost beyond you. Hmm. I don't know. They're, they're like signaling. They got some kind of cool hand signal. I don't know. They're cool looking. No, this is wrong too. Hmm. This appears to be her closet. I'm terribly lost. Maybe I made the wrong turn or something like that? Oh, oh my goodness! Met some nuns! Uh, um, sorry. I think I'm in the wrong place? Oh! It's like a granny nun. She's got some yarn. You're bad. Ah, uh, it seems so. I'm terribly sorry to trouble you, ma'am, but I believe I'm lost. I was just trying to get to the courtyard, but I seem to come right back here. Ah, well, it doesn't sound like you're truly lost to me. Perhaps she's taking a liking to you. She? Why, the Basilica, of course. She's just as lively as you and I. Certainly a way to look at it. Uh, the way I got here is impossible. Yes, this has happened a lot in this game. The way I got here is impossible for reality. Everything was normal until I traversed one hallway, entered a door, and found myself in a room. By now, when I leave the same door, I find myself here. If I wasn't sober, I wouldn't question it so heavily. Sounds possible to me, dear. Though I'm sure you younger generations must hear that and find it unthinkable, unimaginable even. After all, what do I know? I'm just a crazy elder with a rotting brain. You sound like my grandmother. I feel like we've met before. Are we going to address the pink woman with, with the bridal veil at any point in this conversation? Perhaps we have. I cannot say, however. Have you considered that the Basilica or the Lord has brought you here for a reason? Perhaps you're meant to get lost and end up here. Uh, sorry, I don't believe in God. 
Oh dear, that's not music to our ears. I mean, yeah, you probably shouldn't say that to an old nun. She's gonna, like, smack you. However, who am I to judge? The Lord's name can represent one's own defined spirituality. The Basilica brought you here for a reason. Call it fate or not. I suppose. Well, I assumed someone from here would be able to explain and point me in the correct direction, I'm guessing. Otherwise, now, I would try leaving out through that door once again, young lad. Maybe you'll be lucky this time. Thank you. I'll try it. No, I gotta, I gotta see what the heck is going on in here. They're like sewing things? Are they like sewing a dress for her or something? Yes, dearie? They say this basilica. They? Who? Books? General townspeople? There's different sources say the basilica is over 100 years old, possibly 500. Others claim the basilica is only 20. Which of these is true? Oh, I see. Well, I am of the hive mind that this beautiful sanctuary has been here for us to harvest. What the f fuck are you talking about? It's been here as long as earthly materials like wheat and corn have been... Harvest what exactly? Faith, most importantly. I suppose we also value crops and herbs. For what purposes? It's not uncommon for churches to grow their own grapes. The crops we grow feed our mouths, and the herbs we give us divine properties to heal the body and mind. Okay. We did find some mint and some oranges and some flowers in this basilica. I'm not, are you saying those give you divine properties? Okay, uh, there we go. This basilica must have proof for when it was created. The basilica must have proof for when it was created. Does it? If it did, then there wouldn't be any debate for this, right? I suppose it comes down to who or what you trust more. People are written words. Perhaps it's easier to ask Vitorino when I see him. This conversation might go in circles. Alright, tell me, who are you? What in- She's got, like, smudged lipstick? Oh, Akadi. Uh oh. Sorry if I seem startled. Don't think too much me in this wedding dress. S. Esser? Esser is just having me wear it so she can tailor it for someone else here. She's my friend. I'm vaguely familiar with that name. Feels like I've heard it a few times from you. You're beautiful in that dress, by the way. You should ask to buy one similar to that if you can. So I'm assuming they know each other. Whomever this is. Oh, I don't need another fancy dress. I've got a wardrobe full of them. And I'm sure more to come. Wait, she's got pink hair. Is this... Is this Juliet's ex-wife? Perhaps? That would be the only reason I would think that they would know each other. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I couldn't justify spending money on a frivolous item. Not when funds are so tight, either. Understandable. Oh, you wouldn't open- I can't talk. Oh, you wouldn't happen to know the way to the courtyard. The courtyard from here. Mm, not by memory. I would ask Vitorino. He might be around here somewhere. Ah, if I find him again, I'll ask. Thanks anyway, I'll see you around, I'm sure. So she's modeling the wedding dress for someone. It is not her wedding dress. She's quote unquote modeling it. Hmm. Oh, hello there. You said we're a photographer, right? Inspiring. 
one at best. Still getting the hang of it. Oh, could you photograph us if you'd like? We just made these fancy new dresses for the women here, and I'm sure they would look mighty fine in your view lens. I'll consider it, but first I would like to find a way out of here. <laughs> She's just like, oh, uh, we could really use this for advertising. He's like, help, I'm stuck in this hellscape. I just want to get out. So is her name S Esser? I can't say that name very well. Esser. 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 So that's, I suppose, her name. Interesting. Very interesting. A bunch of characters we are suddenly introduced by by accident. Hey, we made it out! Interesting, interesting. So there's like a, a chalkboard here. Lengthy book. Sure, let's fucking go. Am I gonna have to write some shit down? I'm gonna get my notebook ready. <clears throat> Limbs, taken from the old English term limb, are jointed appendages of the human or animal body. Examples of limbs found on the human are arms and legs. Humans are known for having four. However, other creatures such as dogs and cats or even birds are known for having four limbs as well. Most extreme cases of being discovered throughout nature, such as the crab for having ten. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna teach grandpa limbs! Okay, it's, it's noting things like crab. Crab equals ten. Human dog equal four mexican mole lizard which is the only discovered with two front arms so we're gonna put mole lizard equals two okay so we're talking about limbs this is a, this is a cool organ here with some little birds on it it's a bunch of small handcrafted charms made of wood on the organ keys. Take the charms? Sure, why not? Crab. Bird. Mexican mole worm. Duo human. Oh, I see. There's numbers on here. So I'm probably going to have to put the worm here. Because it said uh, two. Oh, you can even see. It has like little arms. Okay, so, well, they said the crab has ten. I'm glad they said that, because I would have accidentally said eight, I think, for a crab. Or, well, they have eight. I would say a crab has eight limbs. But that's going to be for duo, it's going to be eight, I think. And then four is going to be the bird. Two wings and two, uh, two legs. There we go. No matter what I do, no matter what I look through, the door won't open and I can't find a key. I'm wasting my precious moments of youth here. Terribly lost and all I wanted to do was take some photos. Oh, just a bird. What? Whoop, 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 whoop. That bird stole my camera! Damn! How small is your camera? Or rather, how strong is that bird? No way! It just went into that hole in the wall! Nasty little bird. That discounted pigeon will be fed to Venerito when I find it. Just have to squeeze it here. Walk for a bit. Compress between the tight walls. Claustrophobia doesn't hit you as you discover a large opening soon enough. Oh, hey! 
To be fair, a pigeon would steal your camera, I'm not gonna lie, yeah. So this is how a cardi knows about this area, I guess. We feed it every day. The soil is poisoned. The basilica has mutated. The walls have the freedom to move. Everything you've touched was once alive. When I breathe, I feel plastic and sharp sticks enter my lungs. There's something in my blood. Came when I drank. Ate. At the feast. Good! Your trauma shapes your world and view. You have a new appetite that is fueled from horror. One that wasn't introduced from your childhood. Your parents still love you. Your parents forgive you. They just want what's best for you. Mm. That, that hurts a little bit. Honestly. Okay, anyways. I don't want to get too real for a second. Ah! My camera! Did the bird drop in here? Must be, given how heavy this thing is compared to such a tiny creature. These sounds. What could produce such noises? I, I don't know what that was. Like a deer? Or a goat? Closer I get, the stranger things sound. I don't know, that sounds like a large a large deer or goat or something. Slightly cracked open. Open it. Sure, why not? I have no other ways to go. Take a few steps in. What are these sounds? What are these sounds? The room is impossibly bright at first. You can faintly hear strange yet beautiful and solace singing. Singing allures you closer, bringing you to open the door just ever so slightly more. Um, what? I'm sorry. This is not, okay. You're in an operating room. The room is filled with medical equipment and fancy-looking mirrors. The smell in here is horrendous. The bright lights in this room are overwhelming and giving you an intense headache. A small group of people dressed in seafoam-colored scrubs. They crowd a rather small operating table. There's what appears to be red yarn and gold tassels randomly thrown about. They're on the table, surgeons, even the light above everyone. They're about you're about to step out when one of the surgeons look back and notice you. Uh, hi. Oh, a cardi. One of the surgeons approaches you. You don't recognize him due to the mask and uniform he's wrapped in. But you clock him from his distinct voice and gentle eyes. Uh, sorry, I didn't- He suddenly steps away from the operation, walks behind you, blocking you from the exit. I've seen you play piano, Acardi. I've also watched you cook grand, elegant feasts before. Yeah? Y yeah? Y yeah? You've prepared me a meal before, remember? You have some very precise, steady hands. Would you like to help us send this man to heaven? <laughs> send him what? No, I, I shouldn't even be here. I, I don't want to do this. Come, look, I promise it's not scary. The man leads you over to the surgery table. The man's body is already cut. He's certainly dead. Which explains the smell cooked up in this room. His remaining internal organs are exposed to you, at least the ones they've kept inside. His organs are punctured with tubes. They're surprisingly wet and deliciously red. Wait, you've tied strings and yarn inside this man? What's the point of this? What the? Do you know the cat's cradle? The game? 
the lead surgeon directs your attention back to him. There's some strings in his hands being offered to you. What are you going on about? This is why you're here. You can help us. This is such a dream sequence. God damn, this is the most of- out of all the weird shit that's happened in dreams, this one definitely feels the most like a nightmare that you would actually have. This is why you're here. You can help us. We just need a few cats, Cradles. Once they're all done, we will take care of the rest. My fellow working men would appreciate it if you helped us, Cardi. Their hands are quite full. I've never heard of this practice or belief. Did you make this up? I'm not doing this with you. <laughs> He's already got it ready! What do you mean, Akari? We can't stop now. We've already started. Look. You look down and he's right. There's already yarn in your hand. Intertwined with your fingers and his. Let me help you. You must be anxious. I actually don't know how to do the cat's cradle. The human centipede was pretty high up there. The centipede woman that uh, the, um, the bug man needed to kill. But that just felt like a, like an a, an evil angel or something that we were speaking to, with. This actually feels like a, a nightmare that I could see someone having. It's just weird enough, and and bizarre enough. Like, I I could actually see someone having this nightmare. It's, like, so oddly specific. Like, the fact that, like, oh, this person's organs have been have been replaced with yarn. And the doctor is personally asking you to help with this quote-unquote surgery. It's okay, we just gotta knot him up. Just, just, just make some knots in there, I'll be fine. Let me help you, you must be anxious. Oh, oh! There we go. <laughs> ah, I knew you could count on you. Before you can ask questions or recall anything, the surgeon guides you through the next steps. Look at that. You're doing well. The mind goes blank. Watching the te techniques build and soon enough, you're grasping the concept and taking full control. You've made me so proud. Did you ever know you could play this game forever? And ever? Once the cradle is done, you take a step back, allowing the other blood-covered surgeons to carefully remove the cat's cradle, desperately trying to keep its shape. You watch intensely as they begin to put the string inside the man. The gold string almost sings in harmony with the deep, bloody red insides of the man. I've never heard of this practice. Ha! <laughs> I'm sure you haven't, because I made it up! a way for men and women to accept death. Their death. And the loss of a loved one's. It's a form of death. Body preservation. We take the organs from their already deceased loved ones. Put them inside the newly passed body. And now they can all live happily and warm in the next cycle. You're creating new religious beliefs. Religious? No. <laughs> this is pure science, my boy. Unless you wish to add religious subtext, be my guest. But those aren't the origins for everything, are they? Come, look, I promise it's not scary. Would you like to start the new one with the next one with me? Oh. Does this camera start flashing? Is it raining? How did I get here? Did I walk here all the way from my house? No, you went into a bizarre dream world and you got spat out here. You light a cigarette waiting for a response. You hear no movement inside, so you knock again and again and again. So you wake up your friend probably in the middle of uh, the night. Akari, were we expecting you tonight? Ugh. It's almost like 
5 a.m. Oh my god. No, I just needed the company. Sorry, it's so late. And <sighs> Then let's get you out of this rain. Thank you. Ah! Hey, don't go too far. You're bringing mud in from the rain. Bacardi! Damn, 5 a.m. Fucking hell. All right, I am going to get some more water. Okay. <laughs> Look at this pink robe. Oh, sorry for all the mess. Amali was playing and I didn't get the chance to clean up. Oh, no worries. I, there was something I wanted to say. My words, I can't talk. Bacardi, is everything okay? You shake your head in disagreement. Here, let's sit down. You can spend the night here if something's bothering you. You know that, right? Oh, he's flipping the conversation on him. You sit on the couch, hands hiding your face. His chew like returns from his quick, quick trip to the kitchen. Is he the one providing the tea now? You sit on the lush, expensive pink rug. I have this, if you'd like. The only noise that fills the gap is the gentle rain from outside. Toy of you. No, he brought you. He brought you wine. Two of you share a bottle of Pino Grigio. You listen to the rain while Juliet babbles on about random topics. He slurs in speech while getting comfortable on the couch. He tries to keep you entertained, mumbling on about his day, but you can tell he's tired. It's five in the morning! A mixture of honeysuckle and green apples from a drink makes your stomach feel warm. You feel warm. Helps give you a false sense of security to start the conversation. Mm, I came here for... Well, several reasons. Um, you see, after Vitorino called me and... What? Vitorino called you? Pfft, he never calls me anymore. He only talks to me when you're in the same room. He's been so avoidant and strange lately. I feel like they've all changed so much. I don't recognize this anymore. People change. That's unavoidable. We can lose loved ones in ways outside of death. Oh my god, a cardi, you're so grim. I thought you were just softy, but you're really just an emotionally drunk poet. Eh, I'm only soft around you. I have never been a hopeless romantic like you. But with you, I feel like stupid. Stupid in a good way? Like, happy and appreciated. Mm, I see. I've been feeling blue lately. N not because of you, of course. I just, I've been sad. Oh, I like this. I like this image. I won't without, I won't ask without permission, but do you miss when it was just us, secretly? Gravely. It was simpler then. Oh, so that is confirming that they were having an affair together, I guess. I get nostalgic for everything we did. What movies we saw, including the bad ones. The songs we sung, the foods we ate, the clothes we wore. All of it. When I smell August afternoons, I get those old memories of when we went to go to that retro-themed diner or we would go out on late night walks to find pizza. But I miss the company we had before, too. Did you know they're shutting down Lemon Lime Cafe? Now we can't even visit our old favorite places. Oh man, that feeling though is actually... It's, it's tough. I've had a couple favorite restaurants shut down and that's just a... That's just such a very tough feeling. 
knowing you can't go back to some of your favorite places anymore that you've, you've shared some good memories with. When was the last time we had lunch? Just you and I, and we didn't have to talk about debts or global disasters or death. I even miss when the four of us... Five, if you count Gabriel. Gabe... Gabriel. <sighs> if it's true what Federino said about Gabriel and Susan, she loved the fall season, you know? She always wanted a big seasonal vegetable garden for us and Amalia. I miss going to art walks and the botanical gardens with her. Although, I'm sure she would have loved going with Amalia even more. <laughs> Is Susan the name of his ex-wife, perhaps, then? When I think of August afternoons, I get old memories of when we all went to that old country bar when we would go out on late walks to find pizza. I think of the days when I'd go out, get some fresh bread, and take walks in the park. I'd love to cook a big seasonal meal for everyone too, just like I did last year before. Sorry. Don't apologize. I should talk about her more, huh? I'd play your favorite song on your piano right now if I didn't forget how it starts. That's what gets me every time. How it begins. No, just sit still. I like sitting in silence with you more. Besides, you play it incorrectly nowadays. You're really clumsy at the piano, even when you're sober. I guess so. My fingers aren't suited for it. But apparently they're suited for Cat's Cradle just fine. I guess so. If I confess something, will you promise not to get mad? Mmm, depends. I think I'm in love, Juliet. Is it... No. Sorry. Oh. Who? Oh, was it gonna say me? <laughs> Who then? The French priest. Ugh. It's just a crush. It'll fade. With you, they always do. Oh, that's... Julia? I... Did you think... Did you think I had a crush on you again? Were your actions meant to tell me otherwise? We are both consenting adults, Juliac. We promised to not get romantically involved. I wanted to get involved in every way with you. What about what I want? What do you want? I've realized that I left you out of my life plans romantically. But that doesn't mean I hate you or want to leave you entirely. I want you and Malia to run each other and grow, and I don't want to hold you back by pretending things are like what they once were. I wouldn't admit this wound. Wait, I wouldn't admit to this wound before, but it's too much for me. He doesn't respond, just keeping his eyesight pinned on his shoes. Ah, previous fling! When they were younger, I suppose. I still want you more than anyone else to remain in my life. You will always be my best friend, and you've lost so much. So many friends recently, I can't bear to lose you too. You're not dead or asleep, so answer me. Why should I? You're ignoring me. No, I'm acting drunk. I am drunk. I got- I drank at five in the morning on an empty stomach. Did I hurt you? No, not directly. I'm sorry. I just had my hopes up. But we can't parade around a fake romance anymore, can we? Maybe it's because you reminded me of someone. Do- Did- Did you like me? Dude, I was obsessed with you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Man, they're just really laying these two's relationship out on the table. Autumn is a season to remind us it's healthy to let go of things. It's a season of grieving. I think I'm ready at least for this to end. Just promise to not be awkward with me if we have to stay as friends. Don't be so dramatic. 
Maybe I'm just afraid to lose you. Shut up. You'll never get rid of me so easily. You share a drink with them. Share a laugh as you both stumble around in the dark, leaning onto each other for support. Ah, well that does confirm that, that they did previously have a fling with each other in the past, and Akari realized that he wasn't quite as deeply in love with him as he thought and broke up and Juliet's been holding on to some hope that uh maybe he would come back to him and then he was like hey actually um I'm kind of in love with this other guy and then he was like bitch don't tell me to my face it, <laughs> there was a lot of gayness that you just missed unfortunately you poor thing, you keep missing out on the really, really, really gay stuff. Muffins sound amazing, though. There was a whole breakup sh drama that they just went down. Meanwhile, death is difficult. I'm sorry for any loss you had. Oh, uh, thank you. It's kind of... Just don't allow the grief to consume you. Everyone dies. So it's easy to just accept that. But not everyone gets attacked and has their head shot off by a shotgun. Mysteriously. And then a person vanishes into a mirror and that's what Riker wants to find out, okay? <laughs> I think he needs to be a little bit more specific, and I think these people would sympathize more. I think that's what these people aren't getting. Like, I think people are like, oh yeah, 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 okay, I get, I get it. Like, you're sad, you're bummed out, your friend died. They think like, oh, he just died of natural causes, or maybe he got shanked and, and in, a, in a gang accident. It's Riker's like, no, 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 you, you don't fucking understand. I saw a guy blow my friend's head off with the shotgun and then magically disappear. You don't understand. <laughs> it's just going beyond that. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is happening in my life. <laughs> now there's a bug man in my dreams. There's a cursed church in your backyard. It's, it's going beyond some normal revenge stuff. Anyways, thanks, Wanko. Mm. It's going beyond that. Good luck in your quest, man. I hope you get an answer you're looking for. <laughs> oh my fucking god, that is the most cursed thing I've ever read in my life. <laughs> he will have some, some post-nut clarity now. That's really what they were helping him get in that back room. Is That's why it was all dark and there were lots of candles. You know, they were getting him relaxed. God damn. Thank you for helping me in whatever we did exactly. I'm gonna end my motel now if I get anything back. Should I just stop by again? Uh, sure, man. Why not? See ya. Mm. Good night. Ooh, it's like really dark. It's probably like six in the morning or something, they said. McCarty got back to his house. Is this which one is mine? Is it this one? Oh good. Um this stuff is still here. That's great. Uh, can I? What do I do with this? The guts from before are still on the floor. To your surprise, there's no bugs feasting on them. Uh, do I just throw this away? Throw away the pile of guts. Sure. Now there's a stain on the carpet. They're gonna charge me extra for this. Let me check the shade tower, take a shower or bath, and get this filth off me. 
What did he, did he throw it? He said he threw it away. Did he like flush it at least? I wouldn't put it in the trash. That would just stink. Anyway, it's time for a well-needed shower. You never drained the tub since you first got here. Bit gross, really. Oh, the tub's just been full. Lovely. Ugh, let's get this done. Oh. Good. Did something break in the other room? It sounds like the TV's on. Great. Oh, good, the TV's on. That's, that's good. The TV is warm and running. There's a blue screen on, asking for the play button to be pressed. Good. Playing. Mm? Scratchy voice speaks from the audio tape. However, some of the audio seems to glitch. But I feared death. My mother installed that fear and hatred and the idea of death into me. So I fought against fate. Or I tried. I fought back and I've created a new life. All I wanted was to make my nightmares go away because I was scared of dying. My, it seems we've run out of time. It's very late. Instinctively, you look down at your watch. <laughs> oh no, Riker is in your old, old place you lived in, apparently. Can't be 8 in the morning. The clock on my wall says it's a bit past 2 a.m. Wouldn't the sun be up too? Unless my wristwatch is still broken. Uh oh. What is, what is glowing? What? There's a phone in your basket? Excuse me? Was it always there? Probably not. The cord attached to the phone is cut at the opposite end. Secured to nothing. Oh good. A phone. Is this the phone that made the noise? Pick it up. Is the phone works? Should I answer? Of course, pick up the cut phone in your trash can. Oh, whoa, he's like super colorful. Not sure how exactly to answer a phone with no buttons or working a cord. You hold it close to your ear. Oh, I guess he's responding to our uh, lovely, our lovely note. Is this because I tried to contact Leon? Hello? Leon, is this you? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't like this. Riker Dublin. <laughs> the voice on the other line begins to speak, but it's unfamiliar to you. Oh no, I don't like this. It took four bullets to torture Leon and end his life. It will take me just one to end yours. I have no intentions to torture you like I did with Leon, if you can prove yourself innocent. I am tracking you. I will end your life at 8.11, as intended. The phone cuts out. What the hell? Who is that? Oh, that's a good sign. The Mary doll. Oh, good. The Virgin Mary doll is broken. We cannot save on it. There's a strange presence or energy surrounding this doll. Pick up the doll. Sure. You collect the Mary doll shards with your hands and twightly squeeze them in your palms. I put so much trust into you. Both in you, mother, but also in your son. I thought you were guiding me, not just after Leon left, but ever since I decided to become a man of worship. I studied your text, bound in your worship, rejoiced in those blessings and prayers, but I feel outcasted. Is... Is my faith just a joke to you? I'm asking for help. I've been begging for advice, yet you ignore me. You brought me here, right? You gave me a message to come to Rosso and find out the truth. I've done what I can. I've never been more stressed, hurt, or betrayed than I am right now. I'm alone. I have no family to turn to. 
can't ask for help from anyone else. Tell me what to do next. I'm begging for help for anything. Damn it! Why was I chosen to suffer with this? What is your purpose if you can't help a proud believer? I mean, semi-proud believer. You literally just said it's okay to murder someone and you didn't feel super comfortable in your religion maybe about an hour ago. But regardless. Why did you kill Leon? Mother Mary is silent. Why was I chosen? Why did my friend have to die? Please just take me instead. It hurts too much. Stare emptily at the floor. Your bag is sitting on the floor next to your foot. You quietly open it and grab Leon's Bible. Don't do it, bitch! You hold it close to your chest, not questioning the warmth it brings you. Am I completely unknown now? Have I been abandoned by my own lord? You sit on your bed. Emptily looking around the room. Rest your head on the pillows behind you. A million thoughts stir in your mind. Your brain will create new scenarios or ideas that you dwell on for what feels like hours. Ah, my head hurts. Maybe I should try to take that bath I wanted or at least drink some water. Understandably, Wrecker's feeling, uh... Like, he could use some help in his time of need. Um, this is not the help I was expecting. Ah! Ah! Hey, it's you. Indeed, it is I. Oh, Christ, not now. So you're just sitting in my motel room's bathtub? What could you possibly want? I'm protecting you and guiding you. Have you forgotten your quest? I can remind you. No, please don't. Just get out of my bathtub. I don't even know your name. Get out of the tub. <laughs> I told you before, but I'm patient enough to correct you again. I'm made of numerous souls, near the hundreds, so giving me a name would erase their identities and- Right, right, whatever, listen, um, you buggy beetle thing. Beetle. Oh, he seems to like that name. Alright, he's sticking with it. I need you to relax. I've had- a long day. So if you wouldn't mind, I need some privacy. He just sits down! <laughs> it's like, is this fine? You can take a bath, I don't mind. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, so whatever. I'm just gonna... Da -da 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 -da. Beetle starts to play around with the sleeves of his outfit, not paying attention to you. I cannot detect the presence of the other two. I do not know how long I have with you, so pardon me. Um, I'm so- uh, uh, what did you just do? The other two- what are you doing? He empties his pockets of dirt and worms. What are you doing? Leon's soul was never found. We suspected it was hidden in the dirt, just like a worm. He begins to use his finger to draw in the dirt. He creates strange, foreign shapes. You tried contacting him, did you not? I... well... You made a big mistake. Now I have to work overtime to fix it. While he's busy with his work, you ask some questions. Did that weird ritual thing at Dakota's place really work? I really made contact with Leon? I there's no way that's true, right? I made contact with my Leon? Like, his soul or spirit or whatever? More or less, explaining the components of what he is would take too much time. That's a very interesting statement. I like that he says the components of what he is. That's interesting. 
That's like saying that he's not necessarily normal. Beetle. Is that the title you have settled on? For me. Why do you want to help me kill someone? I mean, like, help with my plans on revenge. I love that he is still just... Just smooshing the dirt. <laughs> when your time of judgment arrives, I will be there to take the same punishment. What happens to me, others, or the universe does not bother me. I am neutral on what you do until it becomes life-threatening. Oh, okay. He finishes his project, opening his palms to show a hideous creature. He made a baby out of the dirt. The creature is crying. He just created life with dirt, bugs, and what else he had in his pockets. You don't ask for an explanation. Rather, too bothered by how disgusting the creature cries. Um, I'm sorry? Without warning, he grabs your jaw, forcing your mouth open, sliding the beast down your throat. I do not want to consume dirt, baby. You push and punch, but he doesn't let go until the creature sits right in your stomach. What the hell? How was that protecting me? We're losing time. You won't feel this. He grabs your head and- Oh my god. He grabs your head and smashes the back of your skull against the counter. You see a flash of colors, then pure white lights, then everything goes black. Sorry, buddy, I just gotta knock you the- Fuck out real quick. <laughs> Seeing him staring down at you like that is really good. <laughs> you wake up, feeling a gentle nudge on your shoulders. Protection mode engaged. Ow, my head hurts. The sky above you is moving. No. It's a subtle polar wave to your movements. Oh, we're in a boat. I guess he's like, well, we gotta get you in back into dream world instead of just, I don't know, maybe making you drink some tea or something to lull you to sleep. Nope. <laughs> Go to sleep. Beetle, uh, you hurt me. Wait, 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 where are we? Are we on a boat? Where are we going? There should have been no pain. Do you want me to look at it? There is no bleeding. I don't want you to touch me. There's another man on the boat. You can't see his face that is hidden behind a pile of green apples. I was wondering if he, if he was grapes, but it's apples. Nonetheless, he attempts to speak through sign language. What's he saying? He's trying to warn you of what's to come. I cannot help you after a certain point. There exists a realm that no angelic eyes are to see. Both men point to an island behind them. You look over Beetle's shoulder. There's a forested area with a strange looking house buried deep in the island. This man is helping us reach that destination, but after that you will be assigned a new guide. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't trust him with the concept of pain, given he made a swallow an infant bug. Uh, and then smashed our head over a counter and then was like, oh, that didn't hurt? That was, that was not supposed to hurt. Did that hurt? I'm sorry. I've given you all I can to protect you. I'm trusting you to not get yourself killed. What place is that? Am I dreaming? No shit, Sherlock. The mysterious man begins to sign, and Beetle watches his hands, translating for you. You are in an in-between state of reality and consciousness. Once you arrive on land, our next guide will help you. They have had to carefully hide on the island for a very long time, so they know how to protect you. Riker, please be careful. You swallow any response you originally had. Land quickly approaches. You get on the dock and watch Beetle get further from you. Goodbye. Aw, bye, Beetle. Um, okay. Welcome to Jurassic Park. 
Hello, are you my new guide? Are you my new friend? I don't like this. It can talk. That's so weird. It's like, it's a deer, but it has like a human face stitched over its face. Okay. Are you Riker? We've heard a lot about you. Uh, yeah, that's me. I'm Riker Dublin. Uh, who are you? I cannot say. My old name is cursed. But I'm here to help you. Just understand that the moment you step foot here, you were heard. Heard by who? Many. Follow me, please. Okay. That's the same sprite as the little, uh, things outside the basilica. There's like maggots here. Quickly now. Follow me. Hmm. Looks like a place of worship. But like all fucked up. This place is huge. Yeah, we're definitely in a dream. Why you put why put so many save points right next to each other? It's very funny to me. Oh good, we get another face of this thing. We must pace ourselves quickly inside. How come? We aren't welcome. Are you ready? Okay. Sheep! Chemin de l'égalité. What does that mean? Path of equality. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I should have just let it translate it for me. Oh, I can play my VHS tape here. Cool. Well, okay. To be fair, they have never- whenever there's been French in the game or some other language, the game has never translated it for me. So my personal instinct is to look it up. Okay. Is this the new one that we found, or is this an old one? Okay, we've seen this one before. I believe. Yeah, we've seen this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did see this one. Okay, what about that, that other one? Yeah. So I think it's three? Yeah, okay, I think this is the new one. Yes, this one looks new to me. Also, what am I seeing here? It's like a man with... There's like water flowing. And a butterfly. Interesting. Aha. Uh -huh. So and so became a priest. Simply because wanted him to. Therefore, I took a man who was a prideful hunter, a gatherer, retired veteran, and skillful surgeon. The guest room became his personal library and study room. I had more books in a single room than most children my age had access to in a public library. Oh, is this Leon? Kind of looks like him. Is he getting the Bible here or something? Or is this just a regular book? 
Hmm. That's where I came across this strange, tattered book. A book I had never read before. I was fascinated, immediately following it like a religion. It was a book covering forgotten medical procedures. Part of this book long forgotten technique of adding additional limbs to a person. When I found this book, it was like discovering a hidden path guided by the Lord's light. Guided by his words and breath, I found myself in a new spiral of culture. God was speaking to me directly. Mmm. What am I looking at here? Is this like two cavities? Or one? Kind of looks like two. I, I can't quite tell. Or is it just one kind of pulled open? Might just be one pulled open. When asked, I allowed God to touch my spine and bless it. Hmm. So... Theory time. Maybe... Maybe Leon's Bible isn't actually a holy book. Maybe Leon's Bible is actually a book of weird scientific practices or something i don't know i'm not sure leon could be actually a man of science more than he is of religion or maybe a mixture of both i'm not sure that's very interesting to me very strange there's definitely a, a strange mixture of weird pseudoscience going on but also weird cult bullshit going on in the background of this story oh why does it sound like someone's digging hold on what is this digging sound oh it's just like a rocking chair can i get that to stop No. Okay, well, I'm sorry. You're just gonna have to deal with that while I read things. Oh. Okay. Leon has the others fooled, but I have looked past the veil on his head. I questioned him the other day about a dream I had. He told me... Mm, I cannot continue this anymore. Carefully put the book back. Hmm. Sure, let's grab some scissors. Why the f fuck not? Oh, ho, ho. Can I go back, please? Ha, ha, ha. Hold on to the phone. I feel like I don't want to be in there quite yet. Sheep. Sheep looks tired. Same. Just a hole. Are you sure? Um. Oh my god, everything in here is cursed. Have you got anything to say, weird dear man? Are you troubled? Do you have questions? I have so many questions. Questions for you? Yes, every question. What is this place? Beetle told me I'm an in-between state of reality. What does he mean? Beetle? That's what I named him. The one with the big beetle mask face thing? Let's not waste time. You can ask those questions when you're safe. What is this building? It's constantly changing. It never stays the same. He's unstable, and so is his home. Hmm. If you're quiet, you can hear him. Hmm. Where's Leon? 
Am I expected to find Leon here? Don't. Don't say that name. Is there a reason? Drop the subject. Hmm. Okay. Weird. Were you not told? I was told you're here to stop things. I'm praying that you alone will help us all. Explore a bit and see what happens. Okay. There's some arrows pointing to this. Part of you wishes to touch this remarkably beautiful painting. Similar to an Ophelia painting, okay. Some bunnies, a skeleton. <laughs> Fucking hell. There's so much going on here. There's clocks. There's this bunny door. Uh, the room is like fucking upside down. Oh my god. There's, there's rosaries. Uh, ah, I broke the painting. I'm just breaking everything. I'm a menace. I'm a menace to society. What have we got here? It's a toy. Grabber toys. Oh, hell yeah. I love these things. Yeah. Okay. Well, sorry about breaking the entire room. Well, it said I want to reach out and touch it, right? Hmm. Maybe come back to that. A painting. What or who is painted cannot be described or even guessed at. It's like a clock. Medical bills and letters from debt collectors. Okay. Well, I guess I will go back to that one room that I was like, fuck this. Let's check it out. Welcome to the cube zone. You appear disturbed. Yeah. Do you see these things on the walls? The mounts? Yes. Is death difficult for you to process? Yeah, but these are... They're human heads. They look like normal animal mounts to me. Interesting, yeah, I'm- I'm- we- we the player are also perceiving animal mounts. Fireplace mantle has a photo of some random lady. You don't recognize her. Just as you glance away, you notice the clock behind her right shoulder. It is red as 811. Hmm. No good. All right, time for cube puzzle. I am always bad at these, but maybe, just maybe. Hey. <laughs> oh, I got another tape. Maybe I can listen to that back somewhere. It's a vintage family photo. Some of it is seriously damaged, however. This looks like Leon. He never told me he had a wife. Oh? Leon was married? That must have been before he was became a priest, I guess. Hmm. Maybe she died? Or something? I mean, fair he never told you he had a wife, though it's kind of, you know, breaking <laughs> a lot of rules. Am I allowed to watch and listen to an audio tape here? I mean, it's a VCR, so maybe not. Maybe I need to find that somewhere else. A hole. Oops, I, I mean, I, I wanted to save here, but... Okay, hands coming out of the ground, sick girl, how's it going? 
Oh, I love how this is what he's disturbed by. Carpet in a kitchen. Not the hands. Not this sick girl. Dead body on the table. The person was cut up and poorly stitched back up. Looks like something shiny is inside the body. There may be an item to get whatever is inside. Examining the body, you note the skin is barely held together with stitches. Something inside the body is reflecting back at you. Perhaps there could be an item that helps. So, cut it up with scissors. Using the scissors, you cut at the stitches. Stitches free, the skin immediately begins to recede. Oh, great, we get to see this, thanks. The skin is tough with a rivery cold feel to it. It's difficult to work with. Oh, oh, good. Oh, f great. A foul smell quickly fills the room as you peel some of the skin back. Great, great, great. Oh, great, great. There's eyes in there. I see eyes in there. I see a finger in there. That's good. That's good. A pair of unblinking eyes startle you. They don't move, so you take this opportunity to pull the skin further back. Great. I'm glad we get to see all of this. The smell of decay spreads and makes you nauseous. This is actually, yeah, fucking disgusting what I am looking at right now. There's, like, hands and eyes in here. Every organ is missing, minus the intestines. You've never been to medical school, but you're sure the large intestine is not meant to have human-shaped hands. Yeah, I was, I was looking at that, yeah. There's something shiny under the intestines. Use the grabber toy. Unafra afraid to use your own hands. F fucking fair. Carefully removing the object, you see it is... A doll? A doll was inside? Oh, why did it go... <gasps> okay, we just got jump scared. Great. Good. 10 out of 10. I'm assuming we would get more tissed if one of those things touched us. Good. Good. Okay. Where is this thing? Strange doll. No description. Okay. Um... Was okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Where is there anywhere we could like put this? We can't quite go in here. It looks like. This thing keeps like being like you want to touch it, but oh. Almost as if the swamp and the frame could support something light. Place something in the painting. Well, we did just get a strange doll. Okay, yeah, there we go. Sure. Oh, we're in the painting. We just pulled a Mario 64. <laughs> the mirror fails to show your reflection. This little present. A little doll. It's like a diary. Can we read the diary? Health related topics. Hmm. Dear, what do you have to say of this? You aren't alone in this room. Good! I mean, you're here, but I'm assuming you mean other things. It's a key on the neatly arranged bed. Boon key. Uh. Uh, are my eyes seeing ghosts? They're trapped here. They don't seem to be bothered by us. I thought angels and ghosts couldn't be here. That's what Beetle said. They aren't angels. They aren't ghosts. They're just stuck here for eternity. They must be in pain but can't recognize it. I don't like how it said that in such a normal voice. Let us leave her be. Okay. 
Okay. Sure. Okay. Hmm. Still can't do anything with that door for some reason. Oh, oh, okay, he's excited. Riker, we must leave. I'm sensing an immense, awful energy. What do you mean? Do you mean someone else is here? Listen to me, hey! Does that sheep look distressed to you? Uh-oh. <gasps> Who shot the sheep? Riker, run! Oh, no! Oh, he's having a- he's having a great time, though. Uh-oh. He's- he's- he's just still laughing! Oh, we have a guest! How did I miss you? You're the one who acted on the first sphere? Uh, no way. That's our dude, that's our man! Oh my god, the music. You must be Riker. I have heard so much about you from all the other angels. Is he also an angel? Is he like an angel of death? It's really him. It's Basilio Dante? It's a shame I have to end your existence here. I have no desire to help Leon's mission. So I'm gonna stop it right here. Leon's mission. Just run away. No way. You're friends with... What exactly are you doing here, old friend? Well, you waiting for a countdown to start running? Um, oh. <laughs> I didn't realize I could start moving. <laughs> I thought it was still a cutscene. That was really funny. <laughs> got fucked up. That was good. It was really good. Okay. That's gonna happen again. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. Poor sheep. Sorry sheep. You're getting fucked up again. Well angels in this world are definitely very strange. I mean a beetle man. If a beetle man could be an angel, a man with a, a gun, why not? Uh, leave me alone, man. Leave me alone. Stop laughing. Oh no, 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 no. Ah! Let me in. What the fuck? I made it out. Is he not trying to get in? I don't hear him on the other side of the door. Sure. I were here. Uh, give me like a couple seconds or minutes. Uh, I have been provided pizza. We're back with the goat. We are back. Let's finish this. Riker. I almost got shot by a crazy man. With glowing eyes. Riker, are you alright? I think you're in shock. Uh, uh, Riker! Oh, what? Uh, you're unable to process the situation, but you can't give up here. Like how I can't process anything. What does he mean by all that? Is that really, really Basilio Dante? I can explain later. We need to get you to safety first. Okay, thank you, thank you, dear man. Is he also a picture? See my party? Oh yeah, these were like cracked. It's a large crack. 
They're, they are not savable Marys. Please, hold on, my ribs are still in a great deal of pain here. We can't rest for long. I know, I'm just not used to running around so much. I understand how heavy this must all weigh on you, but you must continue. You're this far already. Riker! Oh no! He shot dear friend! Oh my god! Freaking backwards laugh, oh my god. You're as scared as a deer, Riker. You run like one too. We have no time for games. Would you stop running and accept your fate as if I were to change? Wait, would you stop running and accept your fate if I were to change faces? I am reading that right. Would it ease you if I ended your life looking down at you with the face of a loved one? I can't return to my original generation. So I often have to steal an identity. What the actual fuck? Uh he removes his mask and brushes his hair back. He looks just like Leon. But like a weird black and white version with spooky eyes. What the hell? Riker, you must run! Hmm. You again. You have no right to keep existing. This is the time for a new generation, and I am seeing it through. You should be cheering for me, in fact. What if the- is the deer, like, the original Leon protecting him or something? Is that kind of- that's kind of the vibe I'm getting right now, because of the whole, like, stitched up face thing on him? Because, like, it looks like Dante stole his face. I don't know. Especially because he's like, you still exist. And they said that they couldn't, like, summon his actual soul or something? I don't know. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Especially because the, the deer is trying so hard to protect him. And he's like, don't speak that name! Dante takes the deer's- and, and, uh, earlier in the game, Leon said that he really liked deer. He said that he was particularly fond of them. I wonder if that's what's kind of going on right now. Dante takes the deer's head by the antlers. Uh! Riker. Take my knife and skin Leon when you meet him. Remove his flesh and wear his skin. Then you'll see the truth. What the fuck do you mean by that? I have to get out of here. Maybe not. I mean, he just told me to kill Leon, even though he's wearing Leon's face. I am very confused and scared. Hello, can- Ah ha 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 ha! Hello? Hi! Silio Dante. Was the sight of Leon's face too much for you? I bet you wish you could see my true face, right? To track me down after all this is over, right? God, the fucking backwards laughing is getting to me. If you weren't a coward, you would show it to me. Does it matter? Would knowing my original face change anything? Leon's still dead regardless. Leon is trying to stop me as we speak, I'm sure. Haven't you lost enough? Shut up! You want me to target your birth parents next. I can show them your head when I decapitate you. Stop! Ooh. Your rage blinds you, and your hands grab at his neck. Your weight pins him to the ground. Furiously, you smash the back of his head on the ground, but he keeps his smug smile. How can you tell he's smiling? 
I guess just the way his eyes kind of curl in. You tighten the grip on him. His face drains in color, despite the smile that can't seem to go away. Your petty attacks won't change anything. Would you get it up if I gave you a valuable reason? What if I told you I was his guardian angel? What the fuck? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I protected him by killing the fuck out of him. <laughs> or if I told you I was his work. I was his crop, his wheat, his inspiration. What? Would you like to see Leon now? Can't you hear him? I can't hear him. My time has run out. What are you talking about? Oh my goodness. His face is engulfed in flames. Ask Leon his true co Ask Leon what his true eye color is? What? Naturally, you pull away and distance yourself. The flames become overwhelmingly hot and bright. Take another step away and try to protect your eyes. What? As you gain consciousness, you first notice the ground under you is made of straw. Ah! <laughs> you did it, Riker! You actually fought back for once! Oh my god, I'm back here. This is... This is the beginning of the game. It says 811 though, I don't like that. No way. No, 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 no. What's going on? I hear knocking. So you hear someone knocking at the door. You hold your breath. Uh... Oh, are we doing a time paradox thing? Okay. Oh, Riker, there you are. I've been trying to find you. Did you fall asleep here? Uh. You were gone for some time. I had to make sure you were okay. You're not answering. Are you listening? Is everything okay? Did you fall asleep here? Uh. How are you? Did you catch catch your tongue? Something's wrong. I still have the bruises and pain from the car crash. Am I dreaming? What was that? Oh. Oh, <laughs> careful. I remember my sh shoulders hurt easily. I'm an old man. Riker, what's gotten into you? I'm sorry, Leon, for everything I've done. I'm sorry for any trouble I gave you. I appreciate everything you've done for me. I'm so sorry if I made you mad or upset any time. Hiker, what's, what's brought this on? Are you crying? Hiker, my son. Oh, don't call him that. He's, that's gonna wreck him. Please don't cry. Son. My son, he says. What's wrong? You pinch yourself. You aren't waking up. You're not even listening. You must be distracted by something. Did that hurt fall you more than you thought? Fall? Oh dear, you don't even remember the frightful fall you took earlier today. Would it help if I distract you from your troubles? Cake! You watch him pull out a familiar wrapped gift. Back to the magic cake that survives. God know what. God knows what. It's a yogurt cake. You get choked up, crying harder now. <laughs> Not this goddamn cake! Oh, hey, please don't cry. I thought it would help you feel better. Surprise! I love the fucking confetti. The fucking fucked up birthday music is great too. What's your favorite? Gatoa yo or yogurt cake? Show you an anniversary, Riker. 
<sighs> Stop tormenting me! Riker, what's wrong? What's going on? Nothing is okay. This room is wrong. This cake is wrong. You weep, unable to control your emotions. You're... you're... Riker. You explain everything to him. Memories of Rosso that rushes at once and hits you like a train. Cardi's car crash, the injuries, Gabriel's disappearance, just everything, including Leon's death. Oh, that was something that um, finally made sense to me. Uh, and it uh, wasn't very clear, but, but suddenly made sense to me. Um, maybe the spooky music can stop. Nope, it's gonna happen. Okay, I'll just have to explain it while this music is in my ears. Um, so the character at the beginning of the game w that Riker meets, um, oh good, it's quiet, I can think straight now. The character that Riker meets at the beginning of the game, uh, when he's running away after Leon had explode, um, and he trips and he drops the Bible and the, the character picks it up and their, their head explode. Uh, I believe that character was Gabriel. Um, so when Riker meets Gabriel again and is like, you look familiar to me, that's because he met him briefly, but didn't get, you know, a formal introduction. And that's why the other characters, uh, Vitorino and Accardi, are like, yeah, okay, Gabriel's died? Um, but then very suspiciously has come back to life and has had memory issues. Presumably because, well, you know, his his brains have splattered all over the world. How he's come back to life, God knows. Um, and that's probably why Vitorino is so suspicious of him. Because he's like, you're a completely different person now. Like, you look the same on the outside, but you're not the same pers person anymore. So there's a whole strange mystery behind that character, uh, because he died to Bible head explosion, but has mysteriously come back. Anyways. That sounds awful. Don't cry over a little dream, okay? Do you remember how I told you that human life is similar to that of a star? They both carry life, even after death. Don't be frightened by death, Driver. Naturally, it's okay to be frightened by it. But I think we should embrace it. Mm. I thought he always feared death. But that's what he told me. Please never leave me, Leon. You almost stalled to finish that last sentence when unwelcomed. Familiar pain hits the inside of your mouth. Oh, is it the, te the teeth? Y yep. Don't try and eat that cake! There's no doubt about it. They're missing three wisdom teeth. Same teeth Federino pulled. Leon distracts you as he gets up and dusts himself off. I'll see you later, okay? Today is your birthday, so I wanted to celebrate it with smiles. Birthday? Just try to cheer up and remember, it was all a dream. He waves and leaves. Mmm. Okay. Scared of it containing a curse. Don't eat the cursed cake. I don't. Uh, black piece of paper with eight written on the front. Black piece of paper with eleven written on the front. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Indeed, the cake is a lie. Books with covers of planets, space, and stars. You're interested, but don't want to get distracted. That's true. That would be something easily to get fallen into. What you looking at, buddy? What about this mirror? Leon. Oh, Riker. You still feeling down? I guess. I think I'm having a hard time distinguishing reality from dreams and... Dreams often frighten people. Let's...
That storm was sudden. Thunder got to you too, huh? Riker, you remind me of a frightened puppy. Do you want a hug? Sure. Maybe. Oh, Riker. Another hug! <laughs> hug going for two! Leo's hugs were always warm due to the multiple layers of clothes he wore. Oftentimes his hair would get caught up in your eyelashes, so you had the habit of closing your eyes when offered a hug. His grip is tight, but not uncomfortable. He lets go and fixes the headdress on his forehead. Feeling better now? I hope so. I wonder if we'll be forced to take shelter here because of the storm. Well, this is going exactly how it went before. There was a storm. We should check it out. Yeah. Thank you. I missed you. Hmm? What are you being sentimental for? I pray you feel better soon, Riker. I guess he, this Leon in this fake world or dream that we're in is just acting like... Haha, <laughs> silly you! Acting as if I'm going to be killed. That thing would never happen. There's a music box. Okay. Okay. One's higher. Kind of low. Okay, and there's also these like sparkles. Oh, that was. Is that A that made that sound? No. What does that sound like again? B? There we go. Okay. Oh, um, okay. We're just looping around. Okay, hello again, Leon. Hi. This definitely isn't weird or anything. Oh, Riker, it's just you. You startled me. I'm getting serious deja vu. You look upset. Is that dream really scary? If you let it take over your mind, you won't feel better anytime soon. Don't mind the very ominous thunder as I'm talking. Leon. Oh, we can ask about his eyes! Mm. Um, Leon, I want to ask something. It might sound strange. Ugh, nothing makes sense anyways. I wanted to know what your quote-unquote... True eye color is. Oh. He didn't. He doesn't like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. Smiley face. What do you mean? Um, can you just answer my question, Leon? What do you have to gain from asking such a prying question? That's such a private thing to ask someone, Riker. You should know better. I want to hear about your time in Rosso Kader and what impact you had at the Basilica. I've never been. Please don't ask such bleh. Please don't ask such questions again, Riker. Mm okay. By true eye color, does that mean he's somehow masking what his eyes actually look like? Either by, like, with contacts or by, like, magical means or something? Huh. 
Something about his eyes would reveal that he's not human, I guess, is what they're getting at. Whoa. I went super fast. Mm, okay, okay, I- oh, hold on. Oh, okay, that one sounds like that. This one, right? Yeah. Oh, I gotta do it again? A hidden door. Oh. The music can't play. Do I just try the ball? Or maybe one's like broken? Oh, the key is gone, but the music can still play? That was this one. That was the one I took out, yeah? Oops. So fast. So I have all the keys, right? So I just try all of them, eh? Okay. I gotta let you just try them. Oh, oh, uh, what the fuck? What's going on here? What the hell? The catacombs entrance from the basilica is here? I feel like my insides are all flipped around. Um, hold on, give me a second before I do that. Oh my god, there's like a rainbow pool? Arrows. I won't enter unless a key number is punched in. Is there a code I was supposed to remember? Um, should I just punch in random numbers? Oh god, what was the code at the beginning of the game? Uh, where's my where's my notes? Well, at the beginning of the game. I can try the code from there. What did I write down? Two, six, two, seven. Oh no, oop. It was like two, six, two, four, two, seven. No. Of all the numbers I've written on this page, let's see, which ones can work? Well, there's the number that Beetle told us to never forget, which was our number. Yeah, that was the number I put in. Lucky number, 2611. Lucky number, 2611. Lucky number, 2611. Lucky number, 2611. Beetle? <laughs> Riker Dublin! I thought you said you didn't have access to wh wherever we are. Are you alright? Something looks wrong with you. Yeah, his collars are all fucked up. I'm unsure. 
I was returning home when suddenly I awoke to this place. I rose and suddenly my wings were stripped from me. Oh no! Your wings were removed? Yes, that's what I said. Currently I am camouflaging. Do you remember our talk of your fate, Riker? I feared your death was calculated and predetermined by another. I regret to tell you that I was correct with this theory. Everyone dies, Beetle. It can't be helped. You do not understand. Humans have the same destination in life. Death. That is unavoidable. But you, Riker, are different. Your existence is single, not duplicated like others. What? Duplicated? Yet you live for your deceased friend and not yourself. Does this make sense? Not at all. Beetle, I don't have much time. Are you going to be okay? I want you by my side. Maybe in a way I can protect you. I should be the last concern on your mind. I will survive. Okay? I don't know, he's like kind of fading out. I'm here, but I'm here for you. But right now I must get my wings back. Otherwise I am rendered weak. Riker, do not let this be the last time we meet. I promise to see you again. Oh. Beetle. Beetle. Get your wings back, buddy, okay? Oh. Okay, and none of these paintings seems interactable. Do I need it? Oh. Uh. Okay, we're here now. Okay, these just take me to different places. Frenchie? How'd it go? Oh, uh, I'm sorry I got lost? Wait, go, oh, did you even lock the storage doors properly? I thought I did maybe. Uh, I didn't come through the front door. I can barely explain what's going on. I don't have much time. If it's that urgent, <sighs> he will talk to you tonight. He? How did you know? You should receive an answer soon. We build you farewell, Riker. It must be difficult dealing with a lost soul. Good luck, French priest. You sound like you need it. Okay, so each of these are gonna like pop me somewhere. Oh, okay. Rainbow Bunny World. Uh, huh. Your eyes follow the towering shape before you. It stands over nine feet with its back hunched. Also, I, th I like your idea, SimCity. Yeah, that if everyone is duplicated in this world, maybe Riker is the only one without a duplicate. That's why Gabriel was able to survive, because he's a, a second Gabriel. Hello? It acknowledges you, but without a mouth, it cannot speak. Okay. Goodbye, fox creature. Oh. We're in the basilica, but it's like nice looking and not hella cursed. Oh, Vitorino. <laughs> what happened to you, bud? Has service started? Vitorino? Shit, I bet it has, judging by your reaction. But they already noticed that I'm missing. <laughs> Whatever, these old apples revel in their authority. I know they're not gonna be happy. I accidentally slept- <laughs> I accidentally slept in again. The iron pyrite is the most foolish of all minerals. Just remember that. 
Katarina, what's going on? You're literally talking nonsense. Huh? What? Today's Sunday. No. Is it? I thought today was Thursday. Does he genuinely not know or is he messing with me? Stop looking at me like that. I should get go- Father, do you know what? We're approaching the Harvest Festival. Did you participate in- Partake in last night's raffle? I think you have a good chance. Okay. What's that about? Someone overslept and wasn't able to do mass. Naughty naughty. Oh, we're back in a Cardi's house. Sleeping on the floor. Oh, Riker, you're back. Back from. Uh, I can't even recall. Riccardi, I see you're sleeping on the floor again. You're only hurting your back doing that. Perhaps I am. I was cleaning my house for a while because I couldn't sleep. And I sat down looking at some books and then fell asleep in, I'm guessing. Guilty as charged. Alright. Afraid I have to leave. I don't know how I got here, but I have to catch up on some things. Get some good rest. Mm, I'll try. Good luck with your task. I have a feeling you're doing something important. Thank you, I have a feeling that I'm doing something bigger than I ever anticipated. Doors are always open for a friend, even if we just met. I feel a strong connection with you, Riker. Yeah, just make sure to go to bed before you hurt your back or your hips. Might be too late for that now. Farewell, small priest. I wish you luck. Oh, they're playing together. I'm the blue bear and my bear's gonna eat daddy's. <laughs> oh, Bracker, we should switch soon. Sitting on my knees is starting to... Uh, Riker? The French priest? Yeah? How did you get into my house? Why are you here? I can't even answer that myself. I honestly don't even know how I got here. Well, you better pray, you... Uh, I mean, you're lucky my dog is here to keep me from clocking you out. Whatever's going on, you should find out sooner rather than later. I plan to. No worries. <laughs> Eat daddy's bear. That's really good. Oh, I guess this was the beetle room. So he's freaking gone. Alright, this is the last one. Huh? Oh, oh my- what is happening here? What's going on? Ah, it's you. Dude, what happened to you? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is supposed to be... This is supposed to be younger Leon, right? Is that the man that was in the operating room? It kind of looks like him, eh? Is it? That's my assumption, right? Hmm. That's my theory at the moment. What? Oh, you're that kid with the ruined books. I'm almost 19. I'm not a kid. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I don't know if this is Leon, but whomever this character is looks very similar to whoever ever was in the operating room. What happened to you? You look bad. Bad? I don't know. I got caught with fake fares. They let me out with the warning. Lucky me, I guess. Fake fares? For the bus or something? Here, I got extra money. What? No, I, I can't take money from a kid. I'm not a kid. Do you want these or not, old man? I'm not an old man. You really helped me out when you saved my sister's books, so... Here... Oh, he's like, 
Oh, that's so good. Here's some chains so you can catch the next bus. I'll catch the bus with you, so you have backup. I'll help you however I can. Am I not just a stranger to you? I don't understand. Your parents would be rationally upset if you gave money to someone like me. You won't find out. Besides, who are they to judge who you are? You helped me, so I'm returning the favor. Just get home safely. The man looks at you with the utmost shock. Uh, I will. You're incredibly kind and saved me a lot of uh, pain today. The man gets up, adjusts his tie, and dusts himself off. <laughs> Oh, his eyes are yellow. Hmm, you, yeah. Okay. That's his real eye color. Yeah, that does look a lot like Leon when he's drawn like that, so. It's a very charming face, despite him being completely punched to a bloody pulp. My mother and father will be so thankful to see me today. Thank you, thank you. Please, tell me your name. Oh. I, I guess, yeah, leave the room. So that was just like a room full of memories, I suppose. Hello, sheep. Young one, I believe we've met before. You must not remember me, judging by your reaction. There's a room with many doors. Would you like a hint? Oh, okay, so it's just telling me how to get in there. It's gonna be like, important numbers to yourself, blah, blah. Okay, Basilica time, let's fucking go. The entrance sounds like it's breathing. There's a low rumble of air being pulled in. Then back out. You enter and sure what's on the other side. Time to die! I like this kind of retracing of the game. It's very fun. Ooh, doorland. Mm, there's a door with a strong, unfamiliar presence behind it. Sure, why not? Mmm. Hold on, fake Leon. I have to save in this pool of paint. Don't mind me. Afternoon, Riker. Yeah, cause here his eyes are black, but in that picture, when we when we were speaking to him in the past, his eyes were yellow. Hmm. Kind of a goldenish color. Fancy seeing you. Afternoon, Riker. Fancy seeing you. Huh? Sorry, was that not clear? Sometimes it feels like I'm talking through two separate mouths. Mm-hmm. See you soon. Where are you going? What the fuck? Get back, get back here. Two separate mouths? Are you like two separate people? What's going on? What is happening? Something strange about this door. Won't open unless a key number is punched in. The pin pad looks used. Okay. F. Deer antlers are sprouting from the ground. Oh, there's a key on the ground. Oh, no, that's not a key. That's just this thing knocked over. It kind of looks like a key. It's graves. We look at the graves. No. Oops, no. I want to look at the books. Okay. A piano with missing keys. Ooh. Oh. Oh no.
Well, I know that's middle C. So it's C, D, E. C, D, E, F, G. F, G. A, B, so it's F, A, C, E, that I'm missing. Well, it's not a number. Do I need to actually put in letters? Am I allowed to put in letters for this? Those are the letters that are missing. Oh, okay, that's the. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Good God! <gasps> Why did you hurt me? I'm in pain. Please just let me die. Hi, 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 hi. Rainbow Bunny, help me. Hey. Okay. Rainbow Bunny. Rainbow Bunny. There's a subtle hidden path behind the trees. Under the forest. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of food here. There's like a, a feast, but it's also in front of the... Hmm. Leon. Riker. How did you get here? I followed you. You aren't supposed to be here. Leon, stop the games. Please just tell me what's going on. Uh-oh, this face again. I'm scared, just like you. But I remind myself this is temporary. We must get you out of here. You shouldn't be here. Our biggest priority now is getting you somewhere safe. Uh, uh, uh. Man, even fake Leon is like <laughs> worried about Riker. It's really nice. Leon! Dante, armed with a knife, makes direct eye contact with you. Ooh, ah! Leon! Leon used his body as a shield to protect you. From Dante's knife. Uh -huh. ah! You helplessly watch Leon get stabbed repeatedly. Soon the violence ends, with Dante stepping away from Leon, but keeps his eyes glued to you. Dante inches closest to you er, closer to you, offering his hunting knife. Dante's words from before poison your mind. Oh god, yeah, didn't he say, like, take take off his face? Yeah. Take my knife and skin Leon when you meet him. He sees your hesitation, so he takes his opportunity. Dante overpowers Leon and holds his hand out. Oh, what the- Dante removes two fingers that look like they were, like, sewn on? But makes a big show of handing you the middle one. Oh my. This is interesting looking. The, the, the mouth floating and the eyes. Leon keeps eye contact with you. His, his lids are heavy and there's no sign of pain in his reaction to his lost fingers. Well, he did just get stabbed! All of the pain is concentrated in his eyes, but appears heavy with remorse. Dante drops Leon, who doesn't get up. Leon keeps his head low, almost like he's avoiding eye contact with you. What is going on? The trail of blood from Leon creates a pathway for your attention back to Dante. Oh, what? What is happening? What is happening? 
What is happening? He hands you his severed finger, but you refuse to take it. Instead, you grab Leon by his coat, dragging him behind you, running past Dante to exit this room. Just, just slide him on the floor. You shut the door behind you. There's no lock, thus nothing can stop Dante from entering. <sighs> There's nowhere to go. I don't see an exit. What are we gonna do? Puzzles. Oh, this is really pretty in here, though. I'm not gonna lie. Uh-oh. Here's the time again. Your wounds, you're, they're gone. And your fingers. Wait, what? Your fingers are okay? At this point, how can I be asked to trust you? Dante told me things. Are they true? Mm -hmm. What made you do all of this? For my sake? Or yours? Leon. Leon, is it really you? Are you really my friend, Leon? My friend who wrote poetry and gave me this rosary as a gift? The man who shared moments of laughter and sorrow with me and watched me throw up in the woods? The same one who sat under the stars with you and gave you that Bible. Who attempted to save my life by pulling me into this room? You're a great friend, Riker. I wish you didn't have to go through so much trauma and watch people's fingers get chopped off. I just wanted to help. I lost the chance to save my friend the first time this happened and now I feel like I'm being punished for it. And now I'm starting to think I can't help you or myself. I need you. No, Riker. I don't need to be saved. I'm at peace. Because I'm getting what I wanted. Hmm. Okay. Leon wanted to die. This is, after all, what fate wanted for me. It says so. In that book you hold. Hmm. But I'm not at peace. Nothing you're saying makes sense. You kept contacting me. You're at peace, but you're so desperate to speak with me? You're not making any sense. I can't all these... All I've gotten from your death is cryptic messages and supernatural happenings. I feel like I'm suffocating. Ah, uh, that's not it at all. Riker, I I'm sorry you feel that way. All the notes I've found, your photos at the Basilica, the strings connecting you with everything. It makes no sense. Have you not caught on? You haven't revealed what's under the veil. What do you mean? Ding -de ding This was my fate. All that pages in that book were made for you as they were once made for me they're now passed down to you those pages are linked with my veins and flesh i think he means that literally and they can be made with yours huh phone oh he's got the golden eyes again Leon proudly stands, smiling. He holds out a telephone for you to reach. What if the reason behind my death that night angered you? Would you want to hear it then? If it filled you with dread? Does having an answer satisfy you? Even if it was against your beliefs or what you were hoping for? He motions the phone closer to you. Doing so causes you to take a step back. He notices pulling the phone closer to his chest. He looks at you with pity. What if the reason I died that night was because I allowed it? Does that answer anger you? Ooh. He drops the phone with a loud crash. The crash is met with a gunshot, making you flinch. You look away just for a moment due to the sudden loud noise. It was suicide, Riker. I assisted Dante in what he wanted. I purposefully didn't fight against him, as that's what the Bible told me to do. Dante wasn't aware until now, as he's listening to us, I'm sure. I killed myself that night. No one is to blame for my death. He did say that Dante was quote-unquote his guardian angel, so I guess... He asked him to kill him? Question mark? 
Your eyes trace back to his face. You see him holding a small gun aimed at his temples. Oh! Wait, suicide? I saw your body, your face. I saw the man that shot you. Oh, maybe it was actually suicide. You were killed! Smiley face! You can't hear him due to the loud bells. Play on! Oh! Maybe it wasn't Dante after all. I mean, Dante stabbed him, but... Man falls and you run to catch him. Oh, there's the goopy face! Okay, maybe it was suicide. How do you get revenge on the person that killed Leon if Leon is the person that killed Leon? Huh. Leon's body falls into your arms. You hold him. Similar to before. Leon's disarranged mouth moves. Attempting to speak, but his skin begins to melt like velvet cheese. Oh, whoa. This is a- whoa, this fucking picture. You look up and see Dante before you. He offers his knife to you. Dante stands idle until he slowly backs away. New, faceless spirits gather around. The walls around you begin to melt. Quickly, the scenery is painted exactly how you imagine hell. <laughs> Fucking A. Oh my god. You look at Leon, trying to block your surroundings out. Oh? What is- what is happening? His eyelids stretch when you pull back your fingers, as if the skin on his face is sewn onto yours? What is going on? Every delicate touch of his skin fuses with yours, and your finger fingers peel away his face. You can't undo this. Every little movement in your fingers causes more damage. Oh! You did it! Dante and the other beings around you draw closer. You cannot scream. It can't come out. You did it! Oh, his face is just flowers. Long, thin hands from the ghostly figures point at you. Leon's words echo in your mind. What if the reason wh behind why I died that night angered you? Would you want to hear it then, if it filled you with dread? What if the reason I died that night was because I allowed it? I killed myself that night. No one is to blame for my death. That makes no sense. That doesn't explain his wounds. Basilio Dante, the Bible, the items you found at the Basilica, or how desperate he was trying to contact you. So many strings left untangled. Or left tangled. Little string on your finger. It can't end here. There must be more to this. Whatever he's hiding, it won't stop me here. Oh my god! Ah! Wow, what a fucking cliffhanger. Whoo-wee! My god. <laughs> Monster creature designs guts. So, the way they have phrased it is that this is chapter one of 811, and that eventually a chapter two will release, continuing the story. Uh, whew. So thankfully this is not just like the entirety of the story. Eventually there there will be a continuation of it. Because yeah, that ending sequence leaves me with 8,000 questions. <laughs> British Library, call me Fred! 
I'm glad you could experience that conclusion. Oh boy. I have so many. I, I have so many questions. Uh, in comparison to the the V1 version, I'll have to look back at um, I'll have to look back at my footage, but just from memory alone, um, that was way there was so much more artwork uh, in the third act, especially in that final sequence. Um, that was so much more visually visually impressive. Um, I feel like it was assaulting my senses, and I mean that in the most positive way possible. Um, like, oh my god, I had- I legitimately did not know what was happening in the best way possible. Ah, uh, that was amazing. I- I- that was an incredible, incredible conclusion to what is currently released to 811. Um... I feel like it's very difficult for me to be... like... disturbed and confused by horror games. Um nowadays and that was just like it, it was like a barrage just like like a, a punch after a punch after a punch after a punch it, it was like a boxing it was like a boxing match that i was losing but again it was it, it, it that was like a good thing <laughs> um Uh, I, there is no explanation, and I, again, that was great. I'm assuming we'll eventually get context for it. Maybe not. Maybe it'll be a great, a great kind of mystery. Um, but I was just so stunned. It was just like <sighs> fingers were coming off, and then uh, Leon was like, "Yep, I just blew my brains out," and I'm like, "That just paradigm shift for the entire game." Dante being like, yeah, I might have been his guardian angel, you don't know, and then he stabs him, and I, Leon may be died again, but no, nope, he's fine, and then I'm like, wait, what? The whole eyes thing with the golden eyes, what does that represent? I don't know, and so much. It was an emotional roller coaster at the end, so visually just assaulting the senses. Um... And I, I had barely recovered- I'm kind of glad I took that pizza break. I had barely recovered from probably the grossest thing I've ever seen. Uh, which was the sequence where you had to cut open the doll girl, whatever she is. And you see that like hyper-realistic intestine that's all curled up. And there's like- eyes staring back at you um because a lot of the gore in this game has been very kind of fantastical um like leon's face is messed up but it kind of looks like a flower almost in a way it's kind of it's semi-realistic like your face would be messed up if if you took a gun to your face. Um, but it looks kind of flowery. Um, and then you never actually, you know, see Vitorino, thank god, pull out your teeth or anything. So when, when we see that, um, that was kind of shocking. Um, to see a very almost, it was illustrated, but it was still hyper-realistic. 
um, to see that, um, I was like, fuck, am I gonna have to censor this for YouTube? I'm, I, <laughs> I don't know. It, it kind of bordered for me. Um, I actually don't know how you shoot yourself in the face so that it blows outward like that. I feel like you would actually have to put the gun in the back of your head. Whereas Leon actually put it to his temple. So again, he, he clearly is not a normal person. So magic? Shrug? I don't know. Maybe he's pulling our leg and Dante actually shot him and he just wanted him to shoot him. Like he says it's suicide, but you know what I mean? Like, like he tells Dante like, hey, on X day at X time, can you just, you know, blow my brains out, please? Like, this book that may or may not be actually made of my flesh and tell me of my own demise says that, you know, Basilio Dante is gonna walk up to me and blow my brains out, so, you know. Could you do that, please, for me? Because at that point, is it really murder if you tell someone to kill you? I don't know. But he does specifically say that it's suicide, so... I don't know! He did say that Leon had a plan. And Leon, I feel like, is going to be the secret bad guy behind everything. Considering, one, we've seen that he's involved with the Basilica a lot earlier than we expected. And... We, we're getting these kind of vibes, especially through the videotapes that we've seen, um, that there's a lot to Leon we don't know that we're gonna, I think, slowly unravel. Um, it's going to be less about getting revenge on Leon's killer and learning more and more about who Leon is, what his true intentions are, and, and all of that stuff. And obviously keeping Riker alive by the <laughs> skin of his teeth, I think. Um, and hopefully Beetle. Hopefully Beetle, my, my dude. Um, and perhaps there is a Dante character. There was a videotape. He had a brother. I think very briefly at the beginning of the game, they said there is a Dante figure and a Virgil figure. I wonder if we will meet this Virgil character. I'm not sure. Um, I wa I'm wondering if they were the one in the videotape that like was blinded or whatever because like their mom died or something. I wonder if they will eventually be introduced or not. Anyways, I've been rambling. Um, it's kind of hard not to after that happened. <laughs> after that. I have a lot of thoughts in me head. Which, again, is only more of a... Um, compliment to the creator of this. That, um... It's the kind of game that, that makes you think uh, after you play it. Um, it obviously was an interesting enough game that I wanted to come back to it a second time, which is also a um, huge compliment. Um, I love the artwork in it. Um, absolutely. Uh, it was great seeing more of it. Um, I do admit the... I guess my only critique would be that this second time around, because there were more sort of flashbacks um, with the characters, sort of with um, Juliet and Accardi and Leon and Riker, um, the pacing did get slowed down a little bit, um, so it did feel like some scenes were a bit long um i could tell those i think those were the ones that had been added in um i understand that 
sometimes it can be hard to find places to put that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't necessarily think they should, they should definitely be there. Like, don't take them out. Um, but I definitely remember the flashback when they are in the tent. I remember just being like, okay, we're having mega flashback time. Um, so I think it was like, they had the flashback with the books, and then immediately it was like the flashback with them in the tent immediately afterwards. So it was just kind of like a double flashback. <laughs> So I don't know, that, that, that just kind of was like a flashback sandwich. Um, I think that was really the only thing that I noticed that I was just kind of like, this is weird. Um, but overall, yeah, um, I'll be super excited for when the next part comes out and uh, props on making an incredible experience. I know it's not easy, especially with such a small team. Yeah, I do admit, even just, yeah, if we had gotten maybe just one, one breather of a scene, it is extremely abrupt that we get that, that much of a dump, and then just immediately credits. It is, it is a bit of a, a bit of a smack, um... Especially because I have no idea what's happening. Like, Leon's... Dead, quote-unquote, again. And then there's the, the weird f melding of flesh. And then it's just like, boom, credits. Um, I understand that they mentioned that the development of the game originally was a bit... Not great. Um... It was under a not ideal situation, mentally or physically. So, I mean, I understand you're like, I just want to get this out. You're like, I need to end it at some point. I'm just going to end it here. Um, I get it. So... And to pick a certain point, and they're like, you know what? I'm gonna pick it here. Um, so I am more interested in the absolutely chaotic and bombastic opening that is going to be the next part <laughs> with Velveeta, Velve Velveeta Leon. <laughs> Sticky fingers. <laughs> Sticky fingers of La Velveeta Leon. I'm gonna call it a night. I hope everyone enjoyed that. I hope everyone has a good rest of their Friday. I'll chisel your gravestone. Sleep well.